SIU went into SEMO last season and upset the 22nd ranked Indians with the 28-7 dominating win. Coach Jerry Kill knows SEMO will come ready to play. Down there and I think we snuck up on him a little bit, you know, and I'm sure Coach Billings, as, as good as coach as he is, he's over there telling him, hey, the roles are reversed. Uh, Southern Illinois is reading the papers all the time. They haven't prepared. We're going to go over and get one. Coach Billings in the wide open offense come to Carbondale looking to upset the number two team in the country. site where SEMO, the Indians, come calling. They're looking for an upset and a little payback as they take on the highly ranked Salukis of Southern Illinois. Hello again, everybody. Blake Fulton along with Richard Baldinger. And Richard, we've been waiting all offseason. It's finally here, the opening week of college football. Start of another great gateway football season this year. And let's start off with SIU. The Salukis ranked at the top on almost every poll. SEMO's looking for some revenge from last year. When you look at SEMO, it all starts at the quarterback position. Good enough? Is he good enough? And he's got a tight end that he likes, but he's got other weapons as well. Yes, he does. Andrew Goodenough, last year in the last game in the season, he threw for over 400 yards. But he will be the key tonight to deliver the ball to the outside. They've got some excellent wide receivers, very tall guys. They need to get some points on the board immediately because they don't want to fall behind that powerful SIU offense. You love the tight end position as well and like to get it to the guy right in the middle of the football field. Yes, Roy Goodson, the big guy at 6'4", 230 pounds, an All-American, 66 catches last year. This guy is not scared to go across the middle. He will be a key for underneath with a one-on-one -on -one coverage against the linebackers. Look for this guy to be the key target tonight for some big scores for SEMO. While we talk about a quarterback and a tight end on one side, the other side is all about running backs. Oh, it is. Last year we graduated Thunder and Lightning, and this year we've got the wrecking crew. And one part of that is Terry Jackson, number 25, former Golden Gopher. Man, excellent speed on the outside. Look for him on all the toss pitches. He's the first part of that great running back attack, again, for SIU this year. Speaking of highly ranked, this young man was on a preseason number one team a year ago, but it was Auburn. Brandon Jacobs, 255 pounds. Folks, I'm not talking a center. I'm talking a running back. 4.55 five speed, a top prospect for the National Football League. Look for him to pound it up between the tackles. The third member of our crew is down on the sidelines, and Scott Warman, it's not all about offense. You're exactly right, Blake. Jerry Kill, not only a great offense with that two great running backs, but also they got a great defense. This defense brings back 9 of 11 starters from last year, guys. In fact, that defense from last year only got up 64 points in the first half. They're led by the two-time All-American back in the defensive backfield, Alexis Moreland. He is a good one. Also, Buchanan Award finalist. Jerry Kill said before the season started that he has four guys returning on his defensive line, but he could have nine actually starting. That's how good and deep his defensive line is. We're going to take a break here from McAndrews Stadium. When we come back, we'll have the opening kickoff between SIU and Southeast Missouri State. The 2004 OVC Gateway Football Conference Challenge Series is just about underway, and it should be a good one on a gorgeous night for football. Tim Billings in his fifth season as the head man at Southeast Missouri, also taking over the reins as the defensive coordinator. We'll talk more about that. He spent 10 years at Marshall. Those 10 years, Marshall, the winningest football program in the country during the 90s. On the other side, Jerry Kill enters his fourth season, and what a turnaround. 1-10 to 4-8 to last year, 10-2. Dennis Francione, the head coach of Texas A&M, who makes their debut tonight in the season at Utah. He calls him a very close friend and his mentor. We'll talk more about Coach Kill and this amazing turnaround throughout the evening. SIU is set to kick off, and Southeast Missouri will take over on offense first. It should be a good one, Richard, and I tell you what, what a crowd, what an atmosphere here in Carbondale. I don't know if I've ever seen the start of a game. Folks, we had out here at least 500 Harley David Davidson motorcycles. Forget about the game. We've got a couple million dollars worth of bikes on the sidelines right now. It should be a good one. And we've got toe to pig and we're underway in 2004. 
Simo will take it at the one. This return is Oliver. Up the right side, and he's got a huge hole, 30. And across to the 32-yard line. That's where he's brought down by Kyle Colburn, but a nice start for Southeast Missouri and a nice return for a kid who we'll talk a lot about tonight in Mr. Oliver. Quarterback, as we talked in the open, Mr. Goodenough will step in and lead the way for Southeast Missouri. We're going to look for... We're going to look for Andrew good enough to maybe hit something deep. We look, we see the three receivers on the left side here. They're going to spread it out. They want to get one-on-one -on -one coverage. Hopefully get a mismatch against one of the shorter quarterbacks of SIU. Good enough in the shotgun. Four receivers will look to throw under all kinds of pressure, and he will go down in the backfield. We talked about it. They've got to find a way to block Jeff Jones. And I tell you what, pregame on the field, what were all the coaches talking about? Yeah, talking about Jeff Jones. This is the man with the motor. Everybody's talking about Linton Brown or Billy Pierce, but don't forget about this guy in the middle, number 52. Watch him. He makes a great inside rip move against the left guard. Austin Russell gets inside, turns the shoulders of the guard, pressure for a sack. A loss of nine yards on the opening play. Simo will come back with the shotgun formation. Look across the middle. He's got the big tight end and nowhere to go is Mr. Goodson. Frank Johnson steps up and makes the tackle. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Simo. We mentioned good enough at the quarterback spot. And when you look up front, number 74 and number 76 may be the best tandem of linemen in 1AA football. Big and Connolly. Russell, Ball, and Daniel do a nice job as well, though they didn't show it on first down. Tafu and Matthews are two guys that good enough will have to find away from Ray Goodson. It's third and 14 here in the opening drive for Southeast Missouri. They sit at their own 29-yard line. And again, third straight play in the shotgun formation. High snap. Now good enough will look to throw. Takes a shot downfield. has got a man, and it's dropped at the 38-yard line. And I tell you what, good enough didn't have much. Stepped up in the pocket and tried to find Bill Coleman, and it went through his hands. It's tough when you're in that long situation, third and long. But... But when you take a look at the defense, what we're seeing right now from SIU is you saw six defensive backs in. We call that a dime defense. And they're going to give that zone look. You know what? Simo is going to have to be able to run the ball on this. It's going to be too tough. They're going to have double coverage back to field, back deep with the safeties. Simon off set to punt. Justin George back deep. This ball will hit at the 34 and take a Simo bounce all the way back inside the 10-yard line. It'll be downed at the 7. While offensively things didn't get off to a great start, special teams shifts the football field. Hey, a punt like that is a winning play for you. That's like a great pass. They have to press them down here in the corner. Now let's watch Simo's defense. They want to be able to get SIU in a second and long situation. You don't want to give up five yards in the first down situation. And last year, if I'm correct, SIU was averaging almost six yards per carry. 53-yard punt, and SIU will take over. In the football game between these two teams a year ago, 28 first down plays, 27 of them, SIU ran the football. Probably more of the same. Samberski under center. And we'll see which way they run it on first down at their own eight-yard line. This time they'll run to the left side and not much running room at all. Nowhere to go on the first down play. Terry Jackson goes nowhere. But we talk about good enough on the one side of the football field. Samberski won in pressure with his stats, but he just wins football games. Yeah, he did. Threw for almost, almost has almost thrown for almost 3,000 yards in his career last year, 1667. But he can also run the football. Doesn't make many mistakes. You see 14 touchdowns, only six interceptions. Making his 25th consecutive start at the quarterback back spot. I formation, no game. It's second and ten. Three receivers this time. Keep your eye on number six, Brent Little. This time they give to the first man through, and that's the super back Whitlock on the right side. He's a guy that'll line up at full back, but also move around to a number of different spots, including the wide receiver. He's also a transfer. We're not talking much about him, but we will tonight. Yes, he is from Coffeyville Community College. He's filling the shoes of Brandon Robinson from last year. Super back. Calling an H back. You line him up anywhere, he can block He's got to be able to catch out of the backfield. He will be a quick scat back. He could be a key tonight as the defense looks to key on those other two impressive running backs of Jacobs and Jackson. Richard, a running football team doesn't like third and long situations, but the way Whitlock and Samberski in the backfield move, we'll see if they don't get him out of the pocket. Third and seven. Samberski straight drop. He's going to pump fake and now come back underneath. He's got his man little. Enough for a first down up to the 19-yard line. And a nice throw. Had to 
pump fake, but realize give Little a second, we'll find him, and a nice job by the guys up front for SIU. Yeah, Brent Little stepped up last year, did a good job. He got good separation on the sideline route, catches the ball, picks up the first down, and this was the thing. Simo had him in third and long, third and short situation. They've got to look to be able to stop him there. Right now, they've got him pinned down in their own end. Defense needs to step up again on the run. Simo defensively lines up this way. Jones and Jilson on the ends will have to contain these running backs as SIU's having some problems getting this play in. O.J. Turner's a kid who's been around here and has made a whole lot of tackles in his career for SEMO. And in the secondary, Tipton and White are the corners. It's a timeout, SIU. A new offensive coordinator for SIU. We'll talk about that when we come back. We'll take a break. Come back with more of Gateway Football after this. Football Conference has some great teams and some great players. And looking at the preseason poll for that Gateway Conference, SIU picked number two in the preseason in the country, also picked to win their conference. UNI, Western Kentucky, and Western Illinois all picked in the middle of the pack and think they may be able to challenge SIU. SIU led by some superstar players, including maybe the best defensive backfield, not the running backs, defensive backs and Frank Johnson and Alexis Moreland. On the Ohio Valley Conference side, of course, you've got Eastern Kentucky at the top. Jacksonville State thinks they can challenge Samford, one of the newcomers in the OVC, and Southeast Missouri State may challenge as well, and Tennessee State has a great back themselves. Simos, players up front, Big and Conley, two of the best. Goodson may be the best tight end in the land, and Coots thinks he may be able to kick Simo to some Ws. Come back to SIU. First and 10 following the timeout. Opening drive of the game for the Salukis after forcing Simo to a three and out. Football rests at their own 19. Samberski under center. Back to throw. We'll take a shot downfield. He's got a man wide open. He's off to the races. Across midfield. Down to the 43-yard line. And we talk about tight ends. There's a big one. Chris Kupak. The big tight end goes right down the middle of the field for a gain of 38 yards. You're going to watch both safeties for Simo. What they're going to do is step up. They're going to try to miscue the quarterback, Samberski. But it's a great job one-on-one -on -one there with the tight end against Corey Andre, the middle linebacker. He's more worried about run. He stepped up. The safeties got caught up. Nobody in the middle of the field. And here comes the tight end, number 84, Nick Eterno for over the middle. And for the first time, Mr. Jacobs is in the backfield. That would be Brandon Jacobs. Simo's got 11 guys within six yards of the line of scrimmage. Jacobs to the right side. Blockers in front. Across the 40, 35, and he's chopped down there at about the 34-yard line. But I tell you what, that kid gets his shoulders square. It's bad things for the defense. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's consternation for the defense. Let me tell you, number 27, not the quickest step out of the block. That's maybe why he lost the battle down there in Auburn to Cadillac Williams. But I'll tell you what, I'll take the H2 Hummer any day in the backfield, number 27, Get him going north and south, and he's going to pick up big yards. Pickup of eight yards at the 34-yard line. It'll be second and short. Two receivers split to the left. Hollingshead is one of those. Samberski under center. I formation give. Jacobs left side. We knocked down very close to the first down. This time the tackle will go to Andre again, and Andre's going to have his hands full. He's going to see a lot of number 24, 25, and 27 in that maroon of SIU. And they're going to go right behind center Elmer McDaniel, a lot between, and also both guards. You have Justin Rich, number 72, and Will Justice, number 74. Work for the, Watch for those three in the middle, run combinations, full block, get one on one on those linebackers, get a good push. Number 27 up in the middle, running at full speed. It's going to be positive yardage every time. I tell you, we saw a year ago in this matchup that saw SIU pull the 28 7 upset at Southeast Missouri. A lot of play action from Samberski, keeping it moving out of the backfield. He's under center here on first down. We'll give to Jacobs. Right side, big hole, and he'll barrel his way across the 30 down to the 28 yard line. I tell you what, you get those big guys out in front, it's like he's got two tanks in front of the biggest tank. Yeah, he's just following his fullback or, or his S back. You know, Brandon Jacobs does, does a great job of getting downfield. Watch him get behind his fullback and watch the level of his shoulder pads every time. You don't get a good shot on his body. That's the key of an experienced back. Watch the levels again as he delivers the shot. He keeps his shoulders down. That way, defense can't pop the ball. That's just a big man, 255 pounds, folks. Doesn't look that fast when he's that big, but get on the field, he's running real quick. That's 220-pound O.J. Turner making the tackle and holding on. 
The Louisiana native remains in the backfield, does Brandon Jacobs. He'll get the call again on second down. Right side, breaks a tackle, off to the races, and he'll be brought down. No, flags come flying, we'll have a face mask, and SIU will have first and goal inside the 10. Finally brought down there, Richard, by Corey Andre again. But again, when he gets out there, defensive backs and safeties want no part of it. I'll tell you what, number 72, Justin Rich, pulls on the kickout block and does an excellent job. We're going to take a look at the face mask, but watch number 72, Justin Rich. He goes, he's going to kick out on the block. Now watch. Watch the left guard here. Watch him kick out. On it. And now watch Brandon Jacobs. It's almost like a power O. He follows his tight end coming. Look how an excellent job of following his blocks. Let him get developed. Now you see Corey Andrade on the face mask. Folks, you've got to wrap up that man with both hands or else it's not going to happen. You are not going to bring him down with arm tackles. At 255 pounds, that's a tank running full speed. Ten NFL scouts roaming the sidelines here tonight. I know the Lions, Tampa Bay, the Miami Dolphins, just to name a few. Most people say he's a top five back in next Next year's draft. First and goal for SIU on their opening drive. It started back inside their own 10 yard line. Samberski under center. I formation. Jacobs remains the back. We'll get it to the left side. Run blitz coming. He'll try and turn the corner. Breaks the tackle, dives for the end zone. They'll say he's out of bounds at the one yard line. How about this? He's so smart. He tries to put the ball over the goal line before he goes out of bounds with his right hand. They say he stepped out first, right at about the one yard line. I'll tell you what, I've seen the general manager for the Miami Dolphins on the field with a contract right now for number 27. Dave well, Wonstad saying, get him here for week one. Get him here. But look, look at where he carries the ball on the outside arm. Now he's going to try to stretch it, but that's the strength of number 27. Coach. I am telling you, you cannot dive into him. You have to wrap him up and drive him. His legs, he's too big, he's too strong. He'll run over you every time. 230 pounds, JT Wise, the fullback here on second goal inside the one. Mr. Jacobs, right side, touchdown, SIU. How about that opening drive for the preseason number two team in the nation? Well, what else did you expect from SIU, folks? It's Oklahoma football straight down the field. We're going to run at you. Can you stop us? No, you can't. That offensive line up front, Elmer McDaniel, great push. Justin Rich folding around, getting a good, getting his shoulders square, and then watch Brandon Jacobs. I love the level of his pads as he comes through. He's nice and low, driving in for the touchdown. Coffin on to attempt the extra point to extend the Saluki lead. It's up and it's good. And with 9.28 to play in the opening quarter, the Saluki 7, the Indian 0, Brandon Jacobs takes SIU to the end zone on the opening drive. Drive capped off this way. Yes, it is. We're going to watch the left guard again for them, Justin Rich. But watch the down block by the center. Watch the front side guard, the right tackle, Miller. Great angles. Distort your defense alignment. Go ahead and drive them. Then watch Brandon Jacobs. He's going to follow his blockers. Folks, it's not fancy. Get going north and south. Good job by Justice on the backside, bearing in middle linebacker. And there's my man, number 27. Get out of the way because the freight train's coming. Simo will try and answer. They went three and out on the opening drive. Had a great punt and didn't give up a 92-yard drive. A high kick into the gorgeous night here in Carbondale, Illinois. Taken at the five-yard line and nowhere to go. This drive for Simo is going to start inside their 10-yard line. And how about that? Super back, Mr. Whitlock, on special teams with the big hit. I'll tell you what, the attitude change that you see at SIU. We came here four years ago, and it was abysmal. But the way these guys play as a team now, the attitude right now, the aggressive team is SIU on the field. Simo will take over and for the first time huddle. They came out in the shotgun spread formation. Now they will huddle and for the first time good enough will go under center. Drive starting at their own nine yard line. David Tafu is the tailback. Two receivers for Simo on first down. No gift. Tafu to the right side. Tries to get outside and turn the corner. Gets up to the 12, all the way to the 14-yard line. He's run out of bounds, but a nice run and some positive yardage for Simo. Yeah, it is. I'll tell you what, SIU, Simo does do a good job on the running play. But I'll tell you, up front, SIU does a good job of locking out. Now let's stretch him to the sidelines. As you see Oliver coming, I mean, Tafu stretching it to the sidelines. But that's the speed of SIU now. 
with that linebacker in the inside. You have Royal Whitaker and also Anthony Vernella. They do a good job of getting sideline to sideline. Nesmith and Matthews split wide to the left. It almost looks as if they're running track out there. The track goes all the way around the football field. Good enough to throw. Swings it out to the right side. Complete. And we may have a first down here. It's going to be very close up to the 19-yard line. And we mentioned that we would talk a lot about him. Jamel Oliver, 6'100", 80-pound junior, is a kid that may not have started at running back, but he will see a lot of time in a lot of different positions. Yeah, Jamal Oliver does a good job of swinging out of the backfield on a little flat. Now let's get the ball get going north and south. This is where I think Simo has to work. Let's work the perimeter, whether it's running or to the receivers outside. The inside four for SIU I think is too tough. Simo's going to have more success on the outside. Three receivers. Oliver remains the back behind Goodenough. First and 10 at the 19. Goodenough to throw. Comes underneath. Complete across to the 26-yard line. Ogie Ogie. Maybe the name of the year. O-G-E. O-G-E. Ogie Ogie. 6'4", 210-pound junior from Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah, you talk again, those big, tall receivers. That's the future now in the NFL, the 6'4". But you see the zone coverage of SIU. And as they step back, this is where I think Simo's got to take those short underneath routes, take the first and five, the second and five, move the chains, keep the ball moving, set it up with the pass. They'll do a much better job, and they'll keep their defense off the field. Matthews and Oliver split wide to the left here on second and four for Southeast Missouri. Oliver comes around, speed sweep right side, nowhere to go. How about that play? You bl blow up a speed sweep, and Lionel Williams does exactly that. From Madison, Illinois, he explodes to the backfield. And you got Jones coming again, making great penetration, number 94. Watch him get underneath, right underneath the side. There he is, the defensive tackle. He's just going to come underneath right there. And look how he beats the guard across. I think there was a miscommunication between the right guard and the right tackle that time. Dan Big and Caleb Daniels. I think Dan Big thought he was going to work with, Caleb, with uh, Caleb Daniels, and it didn't get communication as you see Jones getting in the backfield for the big stop. Come on, Big's 3.5 GPA. He's a smart guy out there. <laughs> Three receivers, good enough swings it out to Oliver. Great left-handed catch. He's got some room across the 30 to the 31, maybe 32-yard line. Second time in this series, they swing it out to the back. And Richard, you talked about it. Get on the perimeter and give yourself a chance. You got it, because the the inside linebacker is Royal Whit Whit Whitaker, and you've also got Ranella Jones and Linton Brown, the two tackles, make it too difficult. So let's spread it out. Let's get one-on-one -on -one mismatches. Let's get our guys on the outside, our best athletes, get them in the open field. As you see, Oliver with a great one-handed catch. It's a nice throw, gets his shoulders going north and south. He gets some downfield blocking. Look at the cut block by the wide receiver. That's the reason why that play went. Matthews with a nice job. Another first down out to the 32-yard line for Southeast Missouri. Good enough to throw out of the shotgun again. Comes underneath, complete, and a big hit at the 37-yard line. That big hit by Royal Whitaker there, a pickup of only two yards. You mentioned it, Royal Whitaker, he brings it. Number 34 from Olathe North in Kansas City. Watch him deliver the shot. That's the way you wrap up. Lay the pipe on him, folks. Number 34 is making sure those receivers, when they come across the middle, folks, welcome to SIU football. Goodson comes out of the game. Two receivers wide to the left. That's Matthews and Ogie Ogie. Two backs on second and eight from the 33. 6.50 to play in the opening quarter. Good enough. Gives to Oliver. Nowhere to go. Wrapped up in the backfield. This SIU defense doing a nice job. Mark Phillip on the stop in the backfield. It'll bring up a third long situation. Big Mark Phillip, number 99, gets some penetration. I'm going to tell you right now, the CMO's offensive line, Austin Russell, John Ball, Dan Big, they have to do a better job. You just cannot turn your shoulders. You have got to be able to distort the defense lineman. When I say distort, that means drive. Don't let them come straight up the field. The penetration, they're there all the time in the middle. As I said, I think the CMO's got to continue to attack the perimeter. Quick screens, um, shoot screens. Um, on the outside, little sideline pattern. Three receivers, third and eight. Good enough to throw. Has time. Looks across the middle. He's got his man, Goodson. Complete to midfield. He'll go across to the 49. Football is loose. Simo's got it. We'll have to wait and see what the officials rule here. But I believe they're going to say, hey, loose ball, pick it up and advance it. I tell you what, an interesting play here. That we, there's a lot of things happening, including good enough looking at Goodson saying, "Hey, break to the middle." He finds his man for the first down, and then he fumbles the football. 
as I said, we're seeing a zone defense, and Good Sense does a good job of getting behind the linebackers. Now he comes back across the middle, and what he did is he didn't lead himself too far into the safety. He catches it, but hold on to the football as we see Matthews being aware, going always around the football, picking it up for another big gain in one play for Simo. 45 yards, and Simo trying to answer back. 5.40 to play in the opening quarter. Two receivers. On first down, good enough get. Right side, nice hole, bounce it to the left side and try and get up the middle until they will get to about the 20 yard line. A pickup of three and a half yards, but I tell you what, that bounce that we saw in the previous play, if you're gonna pull an upset against a top ranked team, you've gotta get bounces like Simo got. Yes, you do, but you also have to make sure you hold on to the football because the original play was an excellent catch by Good Sense. You can't afford fumbles and turnovers when you play a team like SIU. But what I like about that run with Tafu on the last play, now you're seeing the linebackers maybe not so tight. They're worried about the pass. You've got the cutback lanes. Good first down yardage for Simo Indians. Tafu coming off a knee injury a year ago. He and Oliver in the backfield. Shotgun formation. Good enough to throw. Blitz coming. we are scrambled to the right side. He gets rid of it. That's a veteran quarterback. Andrew Goodenough, the transfer from Arizona State, got outside of the pocket, threw the football away, and said, hey, let's live to play another day rather than having Ranella put me on my back. Yeah, they're playing a nickel defense right now, SIU. Five defensive backs in the backfield. They're going to have to bring some... And in talking to defensive coordinator, he said they have to bring some different looks. They've got to get pressure on good enough. If you don't, with the height of these receivers, their backup tight end, the guy from New Zealand who's like six foot ten, <laughs> they've just got too many weapons on the outside. They've got to get pressure on Andrew, as you saw, the big play good center. They can't afford him to let him sit in the pocket. Rob Likens, the offensive coordinator for SEMO. What does he have up his sleeve? They call a timeout to talk about it. And Richard, Rob Likens comes in. His first year as the offensive coordinator at SEMO after spending four years as the wide receiver coach at Temple. He comes in here, and really for SIU, they don't know what to expect. No, they didn't. It makes it very difficult to coach against that. But as we said, we talked to defense, quarter for, corner, uh, defense coordinator for SIU. He had mentioned that this is going to be a challenge for us corners. Right now, I think that the reason why he's playing zone is he doesn't feel his corners can run with those wide wide receivers like Matthews and OG OG that are both six foot four. It makes it very difficult. So stay in the zone, give him the underneath routes. What I'm seeing Simo's doing is like say fine. You're gonna play us on a deep zone. We'll take those underneath route. We'll move it five, ten yards and just go down the field. If you're just joining us, we are live in Carbondale, Illinois on a gorgeous night. Blake Fulton, Rich Balding, Scott Warman down on the sidelines here with you. It's been a great first quarter here. Simo goes three and out. SIU comes back and drives it 92 yards. And Brandon Jacobs, six carries, 36 yards, and scored the touchdown for SIU. And Simo is battling back. A nice drive that started inside their own 10 yard line. They're now knocking on the door. A huge third and seven coming up with 446 to play in the opening quarter. Last year's game in the third quarter, Simo drives the length of the field, gets to the goal line, and doesn't score in four plays. Has to turn it over to SIU. That was the game. Let me tell you something, folks. Those guys on offense. So remembering that right now. That game a year ago, a wild when Simo scored on the last play to avoid the first time being shut out by SIU since the 30s. Third and seven. Football rests at the 20. Simo trails by a touchdown. Good enough. Appears that he'll go under center. Oliver, the tailback. Two receivers wide to the right. Blitz coming for SIU. Now Oliver goes in motion. And they'll drop the blitz back. Good enough to throw. He's got Oliver in the back of the end zone. Incomplete. Overthrown. SIU came with that corner blitz. I think it confused the front five for Simo. Yeah, it did confuse them. But also, too, they, they just ran out of room in the end zone. It's, it's tough in that zone when you're playing in this type of field. You just don't have the room for the receivers to run. As we see the corner, he's just going to launch it good enough. But there's just not enough room, even if it's a perfect throw. So it's going to be difficult. I think they're going to have to work something on the perimeter or take that underneath route. You're just not going to have him playing a zone defense be able to hit those corners. The 5'10", 170-pound senior kicker Derek Coots from Perryville, Missouri, on to attempt the field goal of 37 yards and get Simo on the board. The kick is up. It's got the distance, and it's good. Simo answers. They get points. 4.36 to play in the opening quarter, and Coach bangs home the field goal. 7-3 to three now, and now again it gets back this way. Simo's defense has to find a way to stop the running attack. You could do every one of SIU's games 
and we would ask the same question. How do you stop SIU's running attack? Well, I'm going to tell you what. They're going to have to go with eighth men, eight men in the box, maybe nine men in the box. But the key to that defense is the coverage on the corners, but also their linebacker, Corey Andre. He is going to have one-on-one -on -one coverage with the tight end, Mika Turner. He has to do a better job than we saw on the last drive. If they can have one-on-one -on -one with that tight end, with their middle linebacker, they will have success in stopping the run because there's just no way you're going to be able to go seven in the box and stop because of the strength of the offensive line of SIU and also Brandon Jacobs' speed. I tell you, it'll be interesting to see here what SIU does on the return game. Coach Kill had mentioned all these great backs. I've got some options. Do you put Terry Jackson back to return a kick? Do you put Whitlock back to return a kick? They have a chance to return a kick because of Simo's scoring drive that ended on the 37-yard field goal. Coach Billings' team happy to get three points at least, a drive that started way back inside their own 10-yard line. 13 plays, 67 yards, 4 minutes, 46 seconds off the clock. And again, good enough. 5 of 7 for 67 yards on that drive. And I think Coach Billings is really happy as he kept, he's got his defense off the field there for that much amount of time. I'll tell you what, SIU is a power type of offense. They will grind it out. They don't make a lot of mistakes. The changes that Coach Kill has made over here, the winning philosophy, Isimo is going to have their best chance as long as they can keep that offense on the field. Brent Little and Terry Jackson back deep. And again, as we mentioned, Simo didn't score until the last play of the football game last year in this matchup. They get on it three and a half quarters earlier. Decided to go ahead and play in this football game. As Coach Billings told us before the game, hey, they both put on the same uniform. We're going to go play. The other interesting part, Brandon Jacobs on the return team, but up as a blocker. That's a huge tailback up on the blocker. They, no one will return this one as they kick that one halfway to Cape Girardeau. SIU will take over on their own 20-yard line. And we mentioned that. I mean, you have so many different guys and so many weapons on offense for SIU. It's got to be tough for a coach to find a way to get them all the football. Well, somehow he's done it. You, know, you take a look at some of the running backs in the past for SIU. Carlton Carpenter. Tom Kutzos, Abdul Qadir. I mean, they continue to turn them out every year, but Jerry Kill does a great job of assigning them a role. They know where they have to be. They don't make a lot of mistakes. They go out there, and when they get their chance, they do the job. And for the first time, we'll see Terry Jackson. Sag nasty, as the tattoos say on his left and right arm. From Saginaw, Michigan, gets a carry right side, breaks one tackle. A different type of back, he's up to the 25-yard line. High school teammate of one Charles Rogers. Now the Detroit Lions, those two lined up in the backfield together in Saginaw. Yeah, he did, and Terry Jackson's brother is up at Michigan playing right now. But let me tell you about Terry Jackson. He is not the type of guy that's going to crush your bones when he runs. He's going to shoot, and he's going to shake you, and he's going to leave you in the wind. So watch him. It brings a little different style, and that's what makes it harder for defenses now. Now you've got to begin to look at a guy who can start front side, take it all the way back side. So you've got to be a little more smarter on defense. Do not overplay. Three receivers, including Brent Little, the Zambuskis, short side left. He'll look to Little, come with the screens. Got a blocker, makes one man miss, makes another miss, and he'll go down at the 29-yard line. Did a nice job dancing to make a couple of guys miss, but Anthony Lumpkin brings him down just short of the 30-yard line. Yeah, we talk about Brent Little. And, 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 and the key to the offense now is we see the three receivers. Let's spread it out. Let's get one-on-one. -on -one. Let's get mismatches. Now let's get the ball on a quick screen to our best man in the open field. And let me tell you, folks, you have to make that open field tackle at that point. But Brent Little, excellent job of making the first man miss. Get going north and south. And that's what I like about this guy as a receiver. He doesn't do a lot of shaking. He gets going north and south, gets good yardage. Third and one. Why is the fullback? And you know who the tailback will be on third and short. It's Mr. Jacobs. He gets the ball right side. He's going to get hit in the backfield, and he doesn't have the first down. Heck of a job by the SEMO defense, and it's led by number seven, Mike Miller. How about that? 5'10", 198 pounds, throwing his head in there on third and short. Yeah, you're going to see him. As I said, they come out with eight men in the box here. I think they had a little missed assignment on the front side with this in the blocking. But watch the penetration of the defensive line for Simo. They get in the backfield. They run a nice stunt. I like Corey Andre, though, number 25. He beats the guard across his face. Good pad level. He's the one who stopped the play. Kettle cap set to kick. Scott Nesmith. He's got an older brother on this football team, but Scott's the uh, redshirt freshman back deep to return this punt. He's got great speed. We'll call the fair catch and take it at the 27-yard line, and that's where Simo will take over. I tell you what, there may not be too many times tonight on third and one 
Brandon Jacobs gets shut down. Well, let me tell you something. Corey Andre, that's what you want out of your middle linebacker. He's the number one run stopper between tackle to tackle. These are the type of guys that just like to get hit with a baseball bat every day. It's like taking a shower. They go out, they get hit with a baseball bat, they're happy. Right there, Corey Andre showed you what a middle linebacker he did. He came all across his defensive tackle, filled, wrapped up, and made the big play. Nesmith, Matthews, and OG OG, the three receivers for good enough. On first down, football rest at the 27-yard line. Give left side, bouncing to the right side, across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Tackle made by Logan Mize. I tell you, you look at Billy Beard, and Logan Mize, and Linton Brown, and Lionel Williams, those guys up front, after that first couple of plays, they put no pressure on Goodenough and haven't done a great job stopping the run. The negative yards is mostly on the sacks on that first drive. Yeah, yeah we're, we're going to take a look at it front, but what's the line? But I'm going to tell you what happens here. The reason why this is playing, the defense is slanted towards the left of the Simos uh, offense, and that's a great job of Typhoo coming backside. There's not weak side help. Good run. Five-yard gain on first down. Toss right side and down at the 31-yard line. First carry of the game for Elton Peterson, the 5'6", 155-pound sophomore from Melbourne, Florida. I tell you what, young receivers in the in, here in college are looking to go play in the National Football League. Well, in that play, number 18, OG OG, six foot four, 210 pounds. What does the pro scout want to see? Will the wide receivers block? OG OG did an excellent job that time, getting on the defensive back, driving his feet. That's what you want to see out of your wide receivers when they're not catching the football. Shotgun formation, two backs on third and two. 65 seconds to play. Now they split out wide to the right. Nobody in the backfield with good enough. He'll look to throw. Comes underneath. Got Tafu. First down. Will he get both feet in? They'll say yes. The Ohio Valley Conference officiating crew. Will he be enough for a first down? This is going to be right on the marker. Yeah, it is. And Tofu does a good job on the sideline route. Comes out underneath. Gets some good protection up front for good now. He delivers the ball quickly. Now Tafu takes it. Walking the sidelines. It will be close for the first down. It might be. It looks like a hair short. It looked like he got it with his left foot, but not his right foot. Coach Billings is asking for a measurement here. He won't get it. It's fourth and less than a yard. He's going to decide to punt. It's 7-3. You're on the road. Why go ahead and make a mistake? He says, late. Let's send out Simonoff, who had a great punt his first time. We'll play defense. That's one we're going to have to circle and remember that play right there. Six inches. They have a first down and continue to move the chains. Yeah, but Mr. Tofu's got to know where the first down marker is. You've got to quick out, get across the first down. Simonoff's punt. Another great punt. This will send Justin George back deep. It will hit at the goal line and go into the end zone. Punting from way back there. That's fine. They'll kick it and say, hey, let's play defense. SIU will take it at their own 20-yard line. What do you think? We're almost at the end of the first quarter. Simo has kind of settled down here. They didn't get blown out in the first quarter. A lot of people thought they'd come in here and SIU would run all over them. They're right in this football game. Yeah, they've done a good job. I and mean, you can see how they're challenging. They're going to the two-receiver side, and you're seeing the defense for SIU kind of rotate coverage to that two-receiver side. Now they're coming back to the single-receiver side where they're getting the one-on-one -on -one or the tight ends dragging across the middle underneath. Scott Warman is down on the sideline. Scotty, what do you have for us? Hey, Blake, after that last three and out by Simo's defense, obviously, after stopping Jacobs, they came fired up, heading onto the sidelines here. Let's see what they can do on this next possession for SIU. Blake, back to you. Thank you, Scotty. First and 10 at the 20. Samberski under center. Gives to the first man through his Whitlock. Breaks a tackle. will pick up a couple of yards there. A nice job again. This time Nick Schmidt, the sophomore linebacker from Festus, Missouri, up near St. Louis with the tackle. Yeah, the inside guys. And we're going to talk about Bernard Quinn and also Brandon Boner, the deep, two defensive tackles. These are the guys, as we see the rushing yards. He has 44 yards to three. Now, I know stats sometimes. Don't look at them, folks. Look at the score. It's 7-3 right now. Simo's in this game. They're doing a much better job up front. And let me tell you something, folks. Both sides of the ball, the running game is nothing but attitude. Jackson, the tailback. Whitlock, the super back, as they call it at SIU. Now another timeout. 12 seconds to play in the opening quarter. SIU's had to use two timeouts on the offensive side of the ball. Confusion here. Do, do we put that 
communication with the offensive coordinator, or is that just uh, something as Terry Kill saying, or Jerry Kill saying, hey, you know, you guys are starting this clock awfully quick. Well, and that's one thing. I think they've got to do a better job of getting into the huddle and out of the huddle right now. They're coming up to the line with not much, with not enough time, and Simo is doing a good job now, just kind of walking some people around, adjusting their defense. Sam Bursi is going to need a couple extra seconds to see the field, to get settled. What that means is you've got to get into the huddle, get up to the line of scrimmage quicker. And that's the quarterback's responsibility for the other 10 guys. The big play in this football game down the middle, Chris Kupak with the uh, catch down the middle on a play action fake, the big tight end number 86. That really set some things up and then Brandon Jacobs really pounded the football the rest of this quarter. It's seven to three, 12 seconds to play. It's the OVC Gateway Football Conference Challenge Series. And what a challenge series it was last year if you're a Gateway Football Conference fan. Eight and oh, they dominated Dr. John Steinbrecher. The OVC commissioners here and said, hey, I told my coaches and I was a witness to this at their media days in Nashville. Hey, if you want to continue this series and earn some respect, we've got to go out and win some football games if we want to be considered one of the best conferences in one double A. Right now, the Gateway Conference has the upper hand. Shotgun formation, three receivers on second and seven. Football rests at the 23 yard line. Samberski to throw, comes underneath, and it's almost intercepted. Ooh, we almost had a huge play there, and John Paul Usray, the defensive tackle from Midland, Texas, almost came up with a big one. Yeah, he did, number 55. He got good pressure on Samberski. He had to deliver the ball. He wanted to wait for his receiver, but watch number 55. He's going to come underneath. He's going to get some pressure on Samberski. I mean, on the outside. And he did a good job of getting around the corner in the offensive tackle. Again, watch number 55. He's going to get up the field. Now he gets a hand slap. See how the tackle turned his shoulders just a little bit. Quarterback feels that pressure. Sam Burske had delivered just a little bit too soon. Third and seven for SIU. They'll give up the middle, big hole. Jackson will try and make a first down. He will not get it. A nice job defensively by Simo, and that'll end the first quarter. When we come back, SIU will have a decision again. It'll be fourth and short at their own 28. You're watching Gateway Football on Fox. Two ranked one double-A football team in the land leads Southeast Missouri State 7-3. These two teams have battled for many, many years, and you go back, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, so many years that this is the 73rd meeting, including the opening game in this very stadium. That'd be McAndrew Stadium, 1938. SIU lost 27 to nothing right here in this stadium to Southeast Missouri. Fourth and short, and SIU will punt for the second time in a row. Low line drive punt. Scott Nesmith will come up. It will bounce at the 29-yard line and go out of bounds there. And that's where Simo will take over. Two nice jobs defensively by the Indian defense. And again, let's not forget, Coach Billings taken over as the defensive coordinator here where he was at Marshall for a decade. He knows a little something about defense. Yeah, he does. And inside right now, I'm telling you, the two defensive tackles are doing an excellent job for Simo. Quinn. Brandon, you also get Uzre up front, the defensive end. They're getting pressure up the field. And let me tell you something, folks. When you play against the run or you run block, it's all an attitude. It's pad level. It's getting off the offensive lineman or it's getting on a defensive lineman and driving them. Right now, Simo is turning the tide a little bit as you see their defense two times in a row stopping SIU. Three receivers for good enough. First and 10, football rests at the 30-yard line. First offensive play of the second quarter. Give to Oliver, right side. Makes one man miss and will be tripped up at the 32-yard line. But what does that do for a defensive line when they spread it out? They have a couple of guys, so everybody moving around in that backfield shotgun formation. Well, you're seeing right now, hurry up offense on the line of scrimmage. You want the defense to line up immediately so you can see where they're at. And by spreading them out, it makes some natural running lanes. And that's what they're hoping for. You see Tafu coming inside. He actually has got the middle linebacker on that play, Rinella. He's got to scrape around his tackle. He makes that block. It's a big play. Two backs next to good enough. Second and eight at the 32. Moreland coming on the safety blitz. Yes, he is. He gets chopped down. They swing it outside. Oliver makes a man miss. Cuts to the middle field. He's got all kinds of running room. Cross the 45 to the 47-yard line. A great play call against a safety blitz. Yeah, it was. We saw that. Alex Moreland showed the blitz. But Simo does a good job of waiting, not panicking, standing in the pocket, 
Good enough. Watch him again. In the shotgun, stand back. Great cut down block. Now let's get your man in the open field, Oliver, who does a great job of finding, running toward the daylight. Cornerback on that side has got to be able to make that tackle on the front side. He doesn't do it. Who's that number? Um, I think that's number 20, Kellen White. Better job of open field tackle. Tafu across midfield to the 46-yard line, and you mentioned it late in that first quarter, Rich. Simo starting to get a little momentum. They've got to be feeling a little more confident here because, you know, you read national magazines and everything, and they probably had to come in here going, what are we running into? Well, right now, I'll tell you, Simo's doing a good job of hitting the perimeter like I've talked about. The quick screens, the flare-out passes to the running back. Let's get them one-on-one -on -one against those cornerbacks, and they're doing a great job right now. David Tafu in the backfield, who'll get the carry on second down. He'll go nowhere to bring up third and about five just across midfield and there we mentioned the front four do a nice job yeah that's Lionel the train Williams he's just getting penetration let's watch him right here at the defensive tackle position right now they are having trouble picking up them and again this is a miscommunication between the guard and the tackle the guard has got to stay with this tackle longer don't leave to go get the linebacker let the linebacker come to you so the defensive tackle doesn't get penetration Shotgun formation. Two backs, and good enough will take a timeout. Third and three, 12.39 to play in the second quarter. When we come back, can Simo keep the momentum going? They've got a huge third down football rest at the 46-yard line. You're watching the OVC Gateway Football Conference Challenge. More after this. to play second quarter there you see the head Saluki Jerry kill looking for his defense to make a play here good enough to throw on third down or at least line up that way shotgun no backs four receivers will look takes a shot deep he's got a man OG OG is off to the races inside the 10 down to the five yard line the official threw a flag here I believe he went out of bounds now was he forced out of bounds we'll have to wait and see if that's what the flag in the hat on well we're seeing again the spread offense by Simo Again, working the sideline routes. They said our receivers against your cornerbacks as we're going to hear the penalty here on this play. Yeah, it's a matter of did he run out of the bounds bounce. on his pattern before he caught the ball or was he pushed and it's a pass interference because a flag and a hat came. Listen to the ref make the call. Ernie Briggs. He says he ran his route out of bounds and that's, that's just a young receiver mistake. Yeah, it is. He, he's got to remember the sidelines. Where you're at on the field, Adam OG does it. OG OG, excuse me, does a good job, but we saw him step down about on the 40 yard line. You just have to know where you're at on the football field at all times. Good route, but understand the cornerback to that side. He went out of bounds on his own, and he was the first to touch a forward pass when it came back in. The foul is a loss of down at the previous spot, fourth down. Be the loss of down there as well. Oji Oji, if he's playing arena football, he wouldn't have to worry about it. Could have bounced off the wall and kept going. Kept going. And that was a good job by the cornerback, Yemiaki Sanya. He did a good job of using the sidelines as the other man on the sideline. He used it as that is your partner. Forced the receiver wide. 28. Excellent job for SIU. Fourth and Kate Gerardo. Simon offset to punt. He's had two good ones. This third one will be good as well, and it'll be fair caught at the 11 yard line by Justin George. A nice job by Simonoff, only a sophomore from Coral Gables, Florida. And we do want to say uh, all of our friends uh, watching uh, down in Florida, anybody who's got family down there with the hurricanes coming, take cover. They've already canceled the Florida Gators home opener against Middle Tennessee. They'll play that one October 16th. You talk about something crazy. Hurricane Francis, one of the bigger ones. I think it's already up to classification five, 160 mile an hour winds. I mean, that state of Florida, they've been taking a beating so far this summer. First and 10 for SIU. The number two ranked team in the land leads by four. Joel Samburski under center at the 11-yard line. Jacobs, the Auburn transfer, gets it, bounces off one tackle, and crosses the 15-yard line. You see there, that's exactly what we've been talking about. You're talking about a 250-pound kid that gets hit by a defensive tackle and keeps going full speed. Yeah, that's the size and the strength. And as I said, he runs with great pad level. A lot of times, guys are that tall. They tend to run straight up and down. As we talked about, number 92, Brandon Boner, and in on the plate. But watch him get the penetration. He does a good job against McDaniel. 
Jr. though on that side. What the center tried to do that time is we see the tackle. See Brandon Jacob break, breaking tackles. The center has to do on that play when you run blocking, just let the nose guard go. Run him and let the back cut behind you. He tried to go too far. Brandon Bowden comes off. They use their third timeout, all on the offensive side of the ball, and SIU will take it. 11.41 to play in the second quarter. Three timeouts, all on the offensive side here in the first quarter in a couple of minutes. When we come back, we'll see if SIU can extend their lead after this. Bye. Second and seven. Football rests at their own 15. Sambersky under center, the veteran quarterback. Play fake. Now we'll look deep. Comes underneath to the second man and a wide open receiver. He's got blockers in front all the way to the 40 yard line. Estes Hood, the third tight end on the play. Well, actually, that's Micah Turner, who's nicknamed Zeus, picks up 26 yards there. They were looking deep. Had a man open deep and two men open underneath on the play fake. And you see the safety on the backside. He's going to follow Brandon Jacobs going to the right. And here comes the tight end and drag. Across the middle, and that's again, that's what the key to that running game gives you. You saw the free safety rotate back across, follow the running back, it opens up the back door. Kupak on the catch, I'll get it right on the third time. Jacobs gets the carry left side, he runs with some passion right there. He barrels across the 45 to the 47 yard line. I have a feeling someone said to him, hey, if we're going to give you the ball, you better run like you mean it. And he does. And again, when you watch number 27, his job of the pad level. It's so important. When you're that tall, you got to learn how to stay down. But let's watch the front guys. Let's get a push. There they go. Now watch Brandon Jacobs. He's going to make the cutoff. Now, look how the pad levels come down. See the face mask at the very end? But you got to love the pad level there for Brandon Jacobs. That allows his power. He stays over his feet, keeps going for big yardage. Flag is on the play. We'll get the call in just a moment. We mentioned that Tim Billings is back as the defensive coordinator like he was at Marshall, also the head coach. Damon Bradford, who was hired from Tennessee Tech, joined the team before spring practice, was called to active duty with the Tennessee National Guard. He is training right now, and they're thinking that in December he'll be sent overseas, and they could be without him for as much as two years. Yeah. Face mask on. We have a dead ball, personal foul, number 27. We've got a face mask minute. and a personal foul there. So we have offsetting the penalties. Man. Been 15 back. It'll be an off, it'll be a first down, Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois. We had a whole host of penalties there, all near the bottom of the pile. What it all comes out to mean is that the football sits just outside the 46-yard line, and it'll be first down for SIU. And you saw that time, Justice. Brian Aikens, the left tackle, McDaniel center. Better job of communication that time in terms of zone blocking. Who has who staying working together? And as you mentioned, the situation about our Iraq. All, yeah, listen, hats off to those guys who are overseas right now. To be able to do that, leave your families and have to go over there. Hey, I, there's not enough words you can say about all the young men that are overseas right now. Scotty Warman will have more on that in just a little bit. Touching story that these SEMO defenders have, have really learned a lot from. Samberski give left side. This is Whitlock, the smallest of the three backs, but also has all kinds of talent. Flags come flying in. That's on the far side. We're so far away from there. We're almost in the parking lot from that far side over there, so we won't even begin to guess what that flag might be. Well, I suspect the extracurricular activities might begin as we take a look in the pit level, and we're seeing they're going to come back off the weak side. They think they can get behind Brian Aikens. As again, we see another face mask. That is on number 94. That would be Edgar Jones, 6'5", 230 pounds. Got to learn how to wrap up, not tackle with the face mask. That should be a 30-yard penalty. You talk about violent. That was a grab, twist, decapitation, rip off, decapitation, injure. That was a dangerous penalty there, and one that Simo de defensively they cannot have. You can't have. That's a second face mask on this drive. And Simo had him backed up all the way on their own 10-yard line, and here comes SIU. This is what they didn't want. They can't afford the mistake against such a high-powered offense like SIU. Wise is the fullback. Arky Whitlock from Rock Hill, South Carolina, tailback. Play fake, going down the field, nowhere to go. Jason Hollingshead, the senior from Detroit, ran a bit of a seam route. They look like they may go option for the first time with Sam Bursky and Whitlock, but he lets it fly. Good coverage by Southeast Missouri. 
And you, and you see the safety this time for Simo. He stays back. We see, look, let's take a look at the, at the action right at the pit level. You see the little option. We're going to see Hollingshead running the seam route. But watch number nine for Simo this time, Sean Tate. He almost got caught looking in the backfield. Does a good job of getting back and on the coverage. Second and ten, Samburski. Option, left side. This time he pitches it to Whitlock. Short side, makes one man miss. And we hit out of bounds all the way onto the track. At about the 28, 27 yard line, it'll bring up third and short situation. Option, fake option on the first one. This time they go with the option to the short side. Yeah, they are. And what they're doing here is they know that now like, we've got to get our quarterback involved in the running game. This is a good job by Samburski working down the line now the pitch off but what i love about all the running backs for siu there is no dancing it is get the football and you get going or else jerry kills size 10 is going to be up you know what that's good job by whitlock to get in the pitch and getting upfield for almost the first down third and three simo showing run blitz only one receiver give inside nowhere to go for whitlock and he will lose four they brought the house up the middle of the field and fred amano his older brother a seventh round pick of the tennessee titans backup center comes with a big time play yeah they did bring the run blitz and as i said this is what they're going to have to do watch the up top watch the blitz coming here they do a good job but when you bring the blitz you've got to make sure that you get to your right assignments but look at the penetration of the defensive end number 94 that time again for him excellent job getting up the field, Edgar Jones making penetration. Number 54, the big guy in mono, filling in behind him. Again, run the blitz, make sure you get in your right responsibility, the right gap. Simo, excellent job on defense. SIU was going to go for it on fourth and seven at the 31 yard line, and Simo says, Hey, we'll use a timeout. No one's got any timeouts left in this half. We've had six timeouts already with 9.38 to play, a huge fourth down coming up. Scotty Warman is down on the sidelines. And, Scotty, what a great atmosphere. It is an absolute awesome atmosphere to open up the 2004 college football season. And, Blake, you talked about it. Damon Bradford, he's one of the new coordinators for Tim Billings. And you talked about him going to the Tennessee National Guard. And one of his close friends, Cody Vardaman, we talked to him earlier uh, before the game. He's the defensive backs coach. He talked about Coach Bradford going to Iraq here in the next few months. Let's hear what Coach Vardaman had to say before tonight's game. Yes, uh, he was going to try to actually make it tonight if he got away from training, but uh, he's off in Tennessee training right now. and won't get, won't get deployed, actually, until December sometime. So he's doing well. We miss him a lot. Uh, is he looking forward to going to Iraq? Uh, what's his frame of mind about going over there? Well, I'll tell you what, whenever uh, it came up that there was a chance he was going to be deployed, he was a little upset because he was excited about the opportunity at Southeast and kind of the things that he had instilled in our players and our defense. But once he got the word that it was time to go, he was bound to determined to go. And that's the first opportunity I've had to be around a guy like that that was committed and excited about his job. And Coach Bradford, by the way, folks, he's still on the staff even though he's not here. He might be here tonight. They hope he is. Tim Billings has taken over the defense coordinating position for Coach Bradford right now. Blake, back to you guys. Thank you, Scott. Coach Billings mentioned Coach Bradford tried to get vacation uh, from the National Guard and, and come and see this team play, but defensively, he'd be proud of the guys up front. They've got a big fourth down play right here. Fourth and seven. Sam Bursky will go from the shotgun formation with Archie Whitlock in the backfield. Three receivers, including Hollingshead in the slot to the right on fourth and seven from the 31. SIU leads by three. Sam Bursky looks to throw. Under pressure, will roll out, throws it underneath, and incomplete pass. A nice job defensively by the guys up front, including Mr. Amano. And you look at it, Amano's done a nice job at the defensive tackle position, but he's got some help. It's three, four, five different guys, and it's a different guy each time. Yeah, Fred Amano getting a good job again. The underneath rip, he's going to work from the uh, he's going to work from the inside on the guard. He's just going to keep working, bring his feet. And you also see number 55 on that time again. Um, John Paul Uzre, both of these guys, Amano and Uzre, they're doing a good job of technique. Again, getting underneath, and what I like about is the hustle and the attitude. They are not giving up. Good job on their fundamentals and their techniques, getting through the pressure on quarterback. Simo takes over. Good enough to throw. Steps up in the pocket under pressure, and he gets rid of it. Incomplete pass, and again, veteran quarterback knows to get rid of the football, and he had Jeff Jones. We saw him the first play of the game in the backfield. He's back there again. Right now, when we talk about SIU, I think they're having some problems up front with communication. The offensive linemen seem to be setting, not really moving, and it looks like they're having some communication problems on who's 
their responsibility. Is this a three-man front? Is it a five-man front? That's why they're having problems. Seymour on the other side right now, they've just got to do a better job up front. They've got to toughen up better techniques. Two backs in the backfield next to Goodenough. Second and long. Goodenough steps up and under pressure again. And again, he gets rid of the football. All kinds of pressure up front. And when we come into this football game talking about 76 Dan Big and 74 Dan Connolly, two offensive linemen that people think have a chance to play on Sundays, right now Simos is, is getting blown up up front. Yeah, they are. Number 92, Linton Brown. He just. Watch big number 92, a power lifter, but he just does a good job. Number 59's got to learn how to keep his head back for Simo. That's uh, the left guard, Austin Russell. You've got to sit and punch. He lunged. Linton Brown did a good job coming with an arm over. That's a pressure. That's a 320-pound man. He's a state weightlifting champion. Two incomplete passes have taken no time off the clock. And that Simo defense is already about ready to come back on the field. Good enough to throw. We'll try and extend the drive. Under pressure. Now gets rid of it. It'll be an incomplete pass. Three and complete passes and we're talking less than 20 seconds off the clock and now that SEMO defense which has done such a great job has to trot back onto the field and try and stop this SIU running attack. SIU doing a better job on the man on uh, doing a better job on the man coverage this time but again you're seeing the pressure right now there's nowhere to go down the field I think they got to keep working perimeter but you're seeing the push up front look at number 96 you're seeing Linton Brown they're coming around their stunts tight hit pressure nowhere down the field they're going to come up with those type of pressures every time. Simon off with his fourth good punt. This is fielded at the 19-yard line, and Justin George makes a couple of guys miss, returns it up to the 34-yard line, and that's where the Salukis will take over. Rich, explain a little bit further. You talk about the guys up front for SIU. We're going to see it right here. They're having some problems. Yes, they are. I think they're having some problems with the communication. They're seeing different looks. They're seeing three down linemen. They're not sure if a guy's a linebacker or a defense alignment. Do they count them in nerve protection they're not coming off the football very well right now with a lot of aggressiveness one play they look good one play they don't that tells me that right now they're having some communication problems the guys need to start talking figure out where they're at on the field if they can continue to run the ball SIU goes back to the I formation Samberski under center why is the fullback give Jacobs left side Nowhere to go. Pick up of a couple of yards, and I tell you, the SEMO defense is starting to get some momentum. Brandon Bonnert from Memphis, Tennessee, the junior, they're starting to play with some emotion up there. Now, they, again, we talk about this. The longer they hang around, the more they'll start to believe. Yeah, Brandon Bonnert doing a good job of stepping up to the offensive line and getting the lockout, shedding the blocker, getting to the ball carrier. Jacobs right now has got to learn maybe to make some of his holes a little bit on his own, make a little bit of a cut off his offensive lineman. But it's all attitude for Folks, it's attitude in the pits, and right now, Simo's defensive line is winning the battle. Arky Whitlock comes in at the tailback. Not much from Terry Jackson thus far. Option left side. Samberski will keep it, and he goes nowhere. A nice job to string out the play. O.J. Turner, senior linebacker from Cape Girardeau, Missouri, with the tackle. Boner, Jilson, O.J. Turner. I'm telling you, right now, they are controlling the line of scrimmage. Watch the guys up front, folks. Here it is. Watch the lockouts they get. Watch how they scrape right here. Look at this guy. Watch how he pushes. Flattens out the running back. Samberski's got nowhere to go. And there's number 97, Jilson. That's what I talk about, that lockout. Work the tackle, flatten them out. Samberski's nowhere to go on the option. This time, they put Whitlock at the super back, which is, for all intents and purposes, a fullback. He goes in motion to the short side. They'll try and get him the football. We'll see. Samberski to throw. Take Takes a shot down the middle, and Little goes up and makes the catch. Brent Little, the junior wide receiver from Poplar Bluff, Missouri, is also the return man, their best returning wide receiver. He goes high in the air to make the catch. Yes, he does, Brent Little. And the little, the little man goes high this time to come in, but Sam Bursky gets good protection up front, gets some time to look down the field. And I'll tell you what, if they're going to play seven and eight men in the box, you're going to have one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Brent Little gets a good job of separation going up high for the football and folks it's not how fast you run it's conviction that you want to catch the football Brent Little has done it every time going across the middle 32 yards on the gain Little is in motion Samberski give delay to Whitlock makes one man miss makes a second and he'll move up to the 25 yard line and on that 32 yard pass play Samberski to Little Samberski moves to seventh all time in passing yards here at Southern Illinois here. 
You know, we're talking about the line maybe having some communication problems, but this time here, it's just a little slide protection. Now work up to the second level. Whitlock, now let's make somebody miss. Let's jump around to the outside, run to the daylight. Running backs could not go down on arm tackles. Great job on R.K. Whitlock reading his blocks, cutting back for big first, almost first down. Two receivers to the short side. Play action. Samberski looks for the tight end. Now we'll try and get outside. Gets a block. We'll dive to the first down mark. I think he'll be short. They have to slow up on the track. They ran that play earlier. This time, Simo does a better job, but you saw something downfield. Yeah, I did. I, I, I thought he had his receiver on his second level. He should have thrown it sooner. If we might be able to see it on the replay exactly, let's take a look at Sam Bursky. He's going to take the snap. He's going to work the fake. Now watch as the safeties go key on our key Whitlock. The tight end number 84, as you see him coming across, he's got to work for a little bit of separation. Don't run into your safety onto that side. Work for separation. Settle down so Sam Bursky can deliver you the football. Third and short. Wise is the fullback. Whitlock the tailback. Whitlock gets it to the right side across the 20. He'll be very close to the first down. I believe he's got it by a couple of inches and a third and short that they convert. The last couple, they have not moved the chains. Okay, we, we're going to take a look at the pit level, and you're going to see all the mashing in the middle. I'm talking communications. Let's watch them this time. Are they going to come off the football? Not as the best job as they can, but again, I think what the down linemen have to do, if you're going to be zone blocking, stay a little longer. It looked like the right guard that time, Will Justice, didn't stay with his right tackle, Matt Miller, enough. So you have some separation. You have some spaces. Defensive linemen are going to get inside for penetration. And they've got it. Scotty Warman right down there on that sideline, and he had that bird's eye view. I know they had that by half the football, barely. You know, any receiver, when we're talking about when we just saw the tight end, Mika, uh, Mika Turner running, you've got to go to the open spot, but you've got to go know where the defense is on the field, too. Settle down so the quarterback can deliver you the football. Brent Little splits wide to the right. Kellen Allen in motion. Samberski under center on first down. Give again the delay, Whitlock inside the 20, and they've run that play three times on this drive now, Rich. Is that something maybe to get the offensive line more comfortable? Yeah, when you're going to go to a three wide receiver look, what are we doing? We're going to get mismatches on the outside. We're going to get nice running lanes. Let's watch the inside five here, guys. Start with Elmer McDaniel center. I like the way he gets a drive. I like the way that the left tackle keeps his feet going, folks. That's the reason why this play is successful. Elmer McDaniel is the key to that play, driving the backside nose tackle off the ball. It allowed our key to go through for a big game. Why is the fullback with a nice block there? Samberski play fake. We'll look to the end zone. Comes underneath now. Complete just inside the 10 yard line. And Samberski took a hit there in the backfield. Looked for the end zone and found his secondary man. Nice control play. Make it a second and short. Yeah, Fred Amano. I mean, number 54 is in the backfield all the time. Big strong guy. He just keeps working. You see Jason Samberski standing in there in the backfield, delivering the ball. He knows he's going to get hit, but that's the sign of a veteran, of a senior quarterback, of an older guy. He knows he's going to hit. He's got to make the pass. Does a good job. I tell you, we have kept our eye on number 31, JT Wise, who's in there at fullback. He's actually the backup fullback. Matt Weiser is the senior fullback who is not playing tonight due to an injury. Wise has done a nice job. He's a lead blocker here. Whitlock goes nowhere, but they'll give him a yard, and that's all he needed. So it'll move the chains. It'll bring up a first and goal situation. But Weiser's not in this football game, and Wise is, and Wise may be a little better right now than Weiser. And he might be, well, who's, who's wiser, who's wiser? That's the good tongue twister. I'm it, confused right now. We have been confused all night, Rich. <laughs> it has been. It's been a great game so far, but I'm telling you what, this is the running game of SIU. Not always pretty every play, but let's go pound on the defensive line, demoralize them, and that's what they're doing. Are you surprised? We're at four and a half minutes to go in the opening half and virtually nothing from Terry Jackson. I, I, I am surprised, but you know what? Sometimes the defenses will key so much on them, but this is SIU's offense. So many weapons they can put on the field. First and goal from the nine. Thought there was movement up front. Jacob says, hey, I'm going to move, and I'm going to move inside the five-yard line. A little confusing, but the problem is, is the quarterback and the running back knew what the count was. No one else did. Well, Britt. Brandon Jacobs getting to the outside, and he seems to be having more success running to the outside, the inside, and the reason why is the linebackers are so tight. They can't flow over the top, and how about this man, the way he runs. Again, proper pad level for you young guys. Watch Brandon Jacobs dip, 
keep his legs going, see how he keeps his balance. That's why he always goes forward. And I'll tell you what, OJ Turner right now, his chest is might be feeling a little sore tomorrow morning. Second and goal, just outside the two yard line. Jacobs right side, touchdown. Number two for Mr. Jacobs. Two and a half yard run it gives SIU a 13 to three lead and a nice drive. They needed that just before the half to give themselves a little breathing room, Rich. They got that running attack going. Yeah, they did. Will Justice, Matt Miller. Hey, I'm a former lineman. I got to put these guys out there on the front line, man. But watch the surge of that offensive line, the block down. And then how about Justin Rich again? Coming around, getting the surge, and you got to love Brandon Shaker. He follows his running back in for the big touchdown. Extra point is up, and it's good. 3.33 to play in the opening half. Simo now will have to answer offensively. Nice job by SIU. A workmanlike drive. They cap it off with the big guys moving some people up front. Yeah, that's SIU, they do not panic on the offense line, but let's look at that whole right side. Watch the pad level. See how they stay down? See how they distort, distort the defense alignment? What does that allow? That allows number 72, Justin Rich, to get around on his pull, tight pad levels down into the end zone. Brandon Jacobs, you know what? He should be taking his lineman out for pizzas tonight. You talk about that. Justin Rich started every game in 2003. You've got McDaniel, the All-American, rugged, tough center up there. You've also got Miller, 6'4", almost 300 pounds, who started uh, 10 games a year ago. They've got some experience up there, some guys that they know, hey, let's don't panic. It's a quarter and a half in our first football game. We've got great backs. Let's keep doing the things we know how to do. Simo, listen, all of the Ohio Valley people, when they come to the gateway, you have to understand that gateway Eight people are going to run the football. But what you like about SIU's offensive line, when they block down, what they do is they keep their feet going. A lot of guys in goal line just like to dive. These guys drive. They distort the defensive lineman, driving them into the ground. It opens up nice running lanes. And Brandon Jacobs, let me tell you, folks, there's no funny business about this man. The H2 Hummer gets going north and south. It's all over with. There he is, number 27. Uh, He's every bit of 255 pounds. And there you see, he's going to McDaniel, going to his big lineman, saying, thank you, big guy. Matthews and Oliver stand at their own five-yard line. 3.33 to play in the opening half. Simo's got to be happy how they've played defensively. They've just been on the field most of this half, and you're going to get worn down trying to tackle, as you say, an H2 Hummer. Good kick. Oliver will look to catch it at the two. Come up the left side, and he's got blockers. Makes one man miss. He's across the 30, and now we'll try and cut back. Be brought down at the 32-yard line, and they'll give credit to the tackle to Akasandia. Oliver's got some quicks. They've swung the football out to him a couple of times. He's done a nice job returning kicks. Might want to find a way to get him the ball a little more. Yeah, they do. Jamal Oliver has shown the ability to make people miss. And listen, on kickoff, it's get up the field. He's going to go. He's cut back into some good daylight. This guy has done an excellent job on the player pass. They've got to continue it. The perimeter has been their best success tonight. Nesmith and Matthews to the short side left. Good enough. The transfer from Arizona State under center. Sweep right side. Oliver trying to get to the corner. He makes one man miss, but not much there. And you have to give credit to the big fella. James Fields, 260-pound defensive end. He gets outside. For 260 to get outside, that's moving. Well, a 260-pound man outside. But I'm going to tell you what. You've also got to give credit to number 94. We're going to watch here. You're going to watch Jamie Fields. He's going to get a good job. He gets underneath the tight end. Again, you see the miscommunication between the tackle and the tight end. Both men left the block. Somebody has to be on that responsibility. But also, too, number 94, Lionel Williams. He's in the backfield every time. Matthews, a lone receiver, to the bottom of your screen. Good enough will change the play here. Does it like what he sees? on second and long. Give right side across the 40 and enough for the first down. A nice job here and a pickup with only two and a half minutes to play. Simo's going to have to pick up the pace offensively. But a nice run that time. Number 13, Brandon Neely listed as a freshman quarterback. We'll have to check on that one. Yeah, Roy Goodson, you know, that's what kills the coaches is when there's just a miscommunication just because the guys aren't on the same page and a defensive lineman makes a play. That time, though, tight end and tackle on the same page. That's what kills a play-by-play -play announcer as well as number changes. 
Play action, good enough. Rolls out, takes a shot, looks for his tight end, and a great catch across the 40. You talked about him in the open. Ray Goodson, 6'4", 230-pound senior from Jackson, Missouri, with a big-time catch, and here comes the Indians. And the reason that was set up, that boot, is because the two positive running plays you watch the safeties. Again, they're in the nickel. You see him cheat over. They're going to follow Tafu. Here comes out the backside. Good enough. Delivers just enough. Watch the safeties and the linebacker. And you see the tight end, Goodson. I said, coming across the middle. He was going to be a key to making big plays. The man comes up with a big catch for the first down. It's Zemo. 19-yard gain. And here come those Indians. Give inside. Breaks one tackle. Breaks two. And across the 30 to the 29-yard line. And now we're at a minute 43. Remember, no timeouts for either team here. So as we get under that minute, you're going to have to start thinking about spiking the ball, running things to get out of bounds here. Football rests inside the 30 at the 29. It'll be second and short with 90 seconds to play in the half. SIU leads SEMO 14-13, the number two ranked team in 1AA football, has run the football well in the opening half. SEMO trying to get within striking distance here before the intermission. There you see SIU, they're playing the dime defense right now in a zone. Looking for everything under, get, keep everything in front of him. Don't give up the big play. Oliver in motion. Come underneath to Oliver and he'll drop it. Just as good that he drops it. He would have been tackled in bounds and that clock would have run. Would have been right at the first down marker. It'll bring up a big third and three here with a minute six to play in the opening half. Yeah, Oliver just kind of swinging out of the backfield, working to the sidelines. Again, a little bit of pressure, but that's a catch you have to have. You have to have that catch. Take the gloves off your hand. Your quarterback's under pressure. Good now. Good enough. He does a great job of delivering the football. You've just got to come up with a catch in a two-minute situation. Oliver in the backfield next to Goodenough. A big third and three, and the Saluki faithful on their feet. Alexis Moreland trying to get him fired up. Good enough to throw. Comes underneath, hits his big tight end. Football is loose. Will they call it a fumble, or is this an incomplete pass? I believe they're going to rule it a fumble here. SIU has it. I'm not sure. Referees talking, and it is a fumble, and the Salukis get the football. Coach Billings not happy. Rich, take a look at this replay. You make the call. Make the call. Roy Goodson, you've got to be able to wrap up again. Here we are in a spread look. Your quarterback is getting some time finally. He delivers the quick pass over the middle. That's an excellent stick, but when you know you're in traffic, two hands have to come around. Let's see who was the one who made that hit. Again, number five. For, uh, for that would be number five, Frank, be Johnson. Frank Johnson puts his helmet right on the ball when you deliver that pass. Are we sure that's a fumble? Is that incomplete pass? I mean, they rule it a fumble, so obviously the OVSC officials are the ones that are making the call, but do you call that a fumble? It looked like he had control to me. It looked like he had a chance to start turning his head, and that's what the referee says is control of the football. The fumble, that kills all momentum for Simo. Now SIU will try and extend their lead. 57 seconds to play. Terry Jackson is the tailback. Zamburski gives to Jackson, and he goes nowhere. Stopped in the backfield, and with no timeouts, Coach Jerry Kill may say, hey, everybody relax here. Let's don't do anything stupid and turn it over. We'll take a 14-3 lead to the half. Yeah, I'll tell you what, all the four guys inside for Simo, that'd be Uzre, Amano, Brandon Bonard, Bernard Quinn. Since about the beginning of the first quarter, they've done a pretty good job up front helping out. It's just been some of the big plays that have been costing it to them. Two receivers, Sam Bursky, play action. He's going to take a shot. Got a man down the middle of the field, incomplete. Ran the same play they did earlier to Little, incomplete. And again, in the backfield, Fred Amano, who's met Mr. Sam Bursky a number of times tonight, absolutely lowered the boom. Sam Bursky setting up in the pocket. He knows he's going to get hit by who else but Mr. Amano again takes the shot. He knows he's going to get hit. And so sometimes it looked like when he threw that football, he pulled the chain a little bit, but it's hard not to when a 255-pound man by the name of Amano is going to Amanonize you. I mentioned his older brother, Eugene. Backup center for the Tennessee Titans, and I know Mike Munchak, Mike Hammerdinger, the offensive staff there in Tennessee, absolutely love his future. Option left side. Jackson trying to get outside and make something happen. Dives across the 30, and that should be the final play of the opening half. Jackson gets a couple of carries late, but it's not able to do much with it. An interesting first half. 
all kinds of momentum changes here. And with no timeouts, that will be the final play of the half. And it will be a 14-3 lead for Southern Illinois. Two, Brandon Jacobs, short touchdown runs. Two nice drives. And some drives that really didn't look so good running the football. And that's why Simo's still in this football game. Big turnover, though, will cost them the game of the game. It's a game of turnovers. Usually wins that one, wins the football game. Right now, Simo's got one of them. The other one worked in the favor. The other one didn't here in the red zone. Could be costly. And I know that uh, Scott Warman will ask Jerry Kill how big getting that turnover was. We talk a lot about SIU's offense. Their defense steps up. They've only given up three points in the opening half, which is a heck of a job defensively for Southern Illinois, as Scotty talked about in the open. An interesting first half. Two short touchdowns for Brandon Jacobs. Scott Warman is down with Coach Kill. All right. Thanks, Blake. Coach, uh, your thoughts as 11-point lead going into the locker room at halftime? Well, it's been kind of a funny game, and, and uh, we we played in spurts but uh, you know we're, we're glad we're ahead but we know we've got a, a long second half ahead of us and uh, we got a lot of work to do. I know one thing that drives coaches crazy is taking a lot of timeouts. You ran out of timeouts early in this first half. Yeah, we looked like Virginia Tech the other night. Uh, you know it's one of those things that they're starting that clock off of quick on that 24 second clock and we're not used to th this officiating crew who's doing a great job. We just got to get we got to get the plays in quicker. Coach thanks best of luck in the second half. Thank you very much. That's Coach Kill as his SIU Carbondale Salukis lead Southeast Missouri State by a score of 14 to 3. We'll be back with some halftime highlights coming right up. You're watching Gateway Football from the Candor Stadium here in Carbondale, Illinois. Arguably the greatest football player to ever play at Southern Illinois, Jim Hart came to the Salukis from Niles West High in Skokie, Illinois. A three-year letterman for SIU from 63 to 65, Hart ended his collegiate career with passing totals of 283 completions for 3,779 yards and 34 touchdowns. Signed as a free agent by the Cardinals in 1966, Hart spent 18 seasons with the Big Red and later played one campaign with the Redskins. At his retirement, his 2,593 completions in 5,076 attempts for 209 touchdowns and over 34,000 passing yards placed him third behind Fran Tarkington and Johnny Unitas in attempts, passing yards, and touchdowns. He won Player of the Year honors in 74, the Byron Wizard White Award for the NFL's top humanitarian in 1974, the Brian Piccolo Award for being the most civic-minded athlete in professional sports in 80, the Cardinals MVP award three times and was a Pro Bowl selection four times. Following his NFL career, he became SIU's ninth director of athletics in 1988 and served in that capacity until 1999. The Gateway salutes Southern Illinois' Jim Hart. It's 14 to three at the half. Southern Illinois leads Southeast Missouri State. As you see the Harleys cruising around the track here. It is a jam-packed stadium, and I, I know we'll be in one of the. Uh, you know, defensively we played pretty good. We gave up some big plays. Uh, you know, we had them in some crucial situations, but offensively we're killing ourselves. You know, we've turned the ball over twice, and, and they haven't turned the ball over, and that's that's the difference in the football game right now. And you also had a big play that was called back too. Yeah, no doubt on that, but that you know that happens, I, and I'm not worried about that as much. They big played us. We haven't had any big plays. We've had two turnovers, and they haven't, you know. So, really, you know, that's why I'm behind. They've outplayed us. You bring your Harley down here tonight, too? I tell you what, I wish I had one. But, uh, <laughs> you know, still a close game. We're in there. If we just we just got to uh, – offensively, we got we cannot turn the football over. And uh, defensively, we've got to get a few turnovers ourselves. You got it, Coach. Thanks. Good luck in the second half. Appreciate Coach it. Billings, uh, Blake Fulton, didn't bring his Harley like about uh, – two or three hundred other people but uh, he's got his ball club in this game in the second half he does and rich you look at that guy think of the people he's worked with barry switzer jim donnan woody woodenhofer bob pruitt you talk about some guys that not only know how to recruit but also some defensive minds and the one thing that i love that he brings to this game and what he talked about was last year he had a lot of individuals this year he brought the concept and I know a lot of people here it's a big cliche all the time but it's a team. They're playing as a team. They're working together. They believe in each other. And folks, let me tell you, it doesn't matter what business you're in. If you don't work as a team, it isn't going to happen. 
This year you've seen him in the first half. Simo, there's a belief. It's just the turnovers right now that are costly, Tom. Let's take a look at our out-of-town scores here in the Gateway Conference. Illinois State leads St. Xavier 34 to nothing. SMS trails Drake 24-20. They play in the fourth quarter, and Youngstown State leads Slippery Rock 14 to 6. You saw Youngstown State here a couple of years ago. Some of the coaches are actually at SEMO a couple of years ago, Rich. They were talking about that game. Oh, yes, they were. You know, last year, Youngstown, when they had the offensive line, and Youngstown's always been able to run the rock. But that's what I'm talking about the attitude that SIU has changed. And one of the reasons why is now they have a full time weight coach here. Coach, Coach Hill said, he said, you know what, when I got here, most of these guys couldn't even bench press their weight. Now you look at the strength of these guys and what's happening. You're exactly right. Young fan here, there you see Coach Kill. What a job. We talked about this in the open. One and ten to four and eight to ten and two to preseason number two in the land and a stable of running backs that any Division I team would love to have. This guy wins the lottery every year. You know, that last year they graduate Muhammad Abdul Qadir, Tony Kutsos, Brandon Robinson. You think it's going to be a down year? No, I'm going to tell you what. I'm taking Coach Kill with me to Las Vegas because the way he wins in recruiting, if he can do it on the tables with me, we'll get some money. We mentioned it. His buddy, Dennis Francione, who he coached with a number of years at Pittsburgh State, struggling in their opener. Texas A&M down 27 to nothing at one point in the first half to Utah. I know he won't be happy when they talk after this game as they talk each week. No, they won't. But Jerry Kill, as I said, folks, it's all about an attitude. And the difference you see, you swagger and you watch these guys walk on the field. They have confidence. That's why they're so successful right now. SIU gets the football to start the third quarter. Derek Cutts set to kick from Perryville, Missouri. The Harleys continue to cruise around here. And now they're going to head out. But what a night. What a neat promotion. It really made this atmosphere extra electric. And we're underway in the third quarter. This kick will go into the end zone. It'll be brought out about two yards deep, and that's Brent Little to the left side, across the 20, and now we'll try and bounce it outside. Can he turn the corner? No. He'll be brought down at the 29 at yard line. Kellen White with the tackle, but hey, he keeps the legs moving. He goes what should have been a stop at about the 17. He gets it out to the 30. He watched Brent Little again. This is the attitude, folks. It's a team. The play is never over to the whistle blows. But watch Brent Little. He gets up. He gets behind his blockers. Now, as a coverage team, you've got to remember to stay in your lanes. Don't over pursue. They might come back to you. That's an excellent save there by number 20 for Simo, doing a good job of staying, waiting. Don't go in too far. But hey, I, I, I got to love this guy, Brent Little. The way he plays and what he does out on the field, he makes great plays. There you see Jacobs, who will start on the sideline 12 carries 56 yards two touchdowns in that first half Whitlock will be the tailback here to start the third quarter for SIU Samberski will throw looks finds a big fella and it'll be brought down at the 34 yard line Kupak with the uh, catch there you see a flag back at the 20 and you saw it all the way I see a personal foul on the quarterback you're gonna watch you're gonna see the blitz this is number 20 Kellen White he's gonna come on the blitz and watch Sam Burski. He's just as he delivers the football. He does the job. Hey, he knows he's going to get hit. Excuse me. That's for, uh, excuse me. That is. I'm wrong on that. That would be. That is roughing the passer. That would be number five. Travion Brock. Travion Brock. Excuse me. But where did he go with the helmet? Right to the face of the quarterback. It's an instant flag every time. Just another dumb play on the Indians. You can't afford it with an offense. Rushing I guess I do. Here we go five, now. I say you get ball midfield. Illegal contact to the head. From St. Louis. Pretty sure it'd be a Cardinal fan. Down. Fair to say? Tra probably. Anybody right now, if you're a baseball fan, you got to be a Cardinal fan the way they're playing these days. But again, that penalty, I can t guarantee you Tim Millings is not a Travion Brock fan right now. No, he is not. He might be sitting on the sidelines having a little discussion with head coach. First down at midfield, swing pass outside, good block downfield, and again, you see there, Holling's head with the catch, but it's Allen, the other wide receiver, that does a nice job to block and let him pick up what should have been a three-yard gain into an eight-yard gain. Yeah, quarterback Sam Bursky. Now, he's reading this. He's just seeing a soft corner on the outside. He's pre-reading this with his receiver. Holling said, hey, let's just take it outside, swing it out quick. Get him in open field. Nice play. If Simo wants to stack the inside, let's work the perimeter. That's an excellent job by SIU now. They're doing a better job inside, outside, mixing it up, getting their best players on the outside one-on-one. -on -one. Make the big play. Early third quarter, two receivers split wide to the left for Sam Bruski. Give left side Whitlock. 
Oh, big hit in the hole that time. I tell you what, if that's Brandon Jacobs, he's still running. But Whitlock only goes 5'9", 195 pounds. But again, he is a transfer here, and people are saying he may be the best of all three of them. Yeah, he is, and he follows his blockers. But I'm going to tell you what, when you take it backside the way he did, your blockers are thinking it's going to come forward. Stay in the hole. Stay in the hole. It was right outside the tackle. Right there, O.J. Turner, backside tackle, fills that backside eight gap where he's supposed to be. Put the helmet on him. RK, follow your blockers. It'll be a lot easier. Wise is the fullback here on first down. Give left side. Whitlock bounces it outside, and he'll have another 15 yards. They'll say 14 yards, he's down to about the 26. I tell you what, though, this is the type of drive I think we thought we would see all the first half. Well, Mr. Whitlock decided to listen to Mr. Baldinger up in the booth. This time he's going to stay with his blockers behind the left guard and the left tackle. And look how number 75, Aikens, gets to the second level. Now he's going to follow his fullback. Stay there. Stay. Follow your fullback. Come on. Bring it back outside. There you go. Don't cheat. Get downfield, and I love the block by number 31, Mr. Wise. He looks really wise on that play. He does. Three receivers. First down. Whitlock again right side behind the blockers, and he's down near the 20-yard line. This is that smash-mouth football that Coach Kill loves to use. And you know what? This is without Brandon Jacobs. And you know, when they get down inside the 10, you know who's coming in the football game. Yeah, they're doing it. As you see, and Simo's trying to do some blitzes and stunts up front. But now the offensive line, don't panic. You don't have to rush. Just sit and wait. Let the men come to you. These are big guys. You can golf them. R.K. Whitlock following your blockers. And this is the offensive weapons of Southern Illinois. They can bring the different back with a different style every time. Go forth and Hollings head. Split wide to the left for SIU on second down. They'll swing to the left. Samburski dodges a sack. And I tell you what, he almost had his head ripped off. Edgar Jones was in the backfield. He almost took his head and the football away from Samburski. Yeah, again, you know, Simo's done some jobs when they had to. These front guys up front have been doing a good job. Again, this is a play-action pass. Number 94, you see the right tackle, number 65, Matt Miller. When you come down, when you come down on the down block, you can't really see it. But what had happened is they just had too many men lined up to strength. There's no one there. The back's got to take the outside. It's a pressure on the quarterback. Third and six, Jacobs in at tailback, Whitlock at the super back. Play action, he'll look to Whitlock. Now he'll throw it down inside the 10, complete. And they're gonna say, no signal yet. They're gonna say he's out of bounds at the three yard line. That's Jason Hollingshead, the senior from Detroit. That play I think was intended to Whitlock sprinting outside. He was covered and Zambruski, I tell you what, it's what you get with a veteran quarterback. Yeah, he does. He stands in the pocket. Again, good job by the offensive line, giving him some time, allowing him a good passing lane to see down the field. As you said, he was looking on the outside to Whitlock, but here comes Hollingshead. And again, you had confusion between the safety and the cornerback in that cover two look. The corner's got to jam the receiver to allow the safety to get over the top. Do we call Brandon Jacobs' name for the third time heading into the end zone? It's first and goal at the two. Jacobs, left side, end zone. You will not bring him down near the goal line. And what a heck of an opening drive with 11-11 to play in the third quarter by the number two ranked team in 1AA football. Folks, the big man up front. Let's go with Will Justice, number 74. And I'll tell you, Brandon Jacobs is a man with a bunch of children. For Watch 74 Justice get around, and now watch. Watch Jacobs just hit some people, and they just fall down. They bounce off him. This is Superman. You know, it kind of reminds me of the basketball game. You see Carl Malone on the basketball court. He's bigger and better than anyone else. Extra point is up and good. 21 to 3, the Salukis on top. You wouldn't want to meet him in the hole, would you? I would. For an NFL salary, I'll be there. We'll take a break. Come back and see if Simo can answer after this. the pits the big men up front they're blocking and mr wise the fullback does some blocking let's just take it it's going to go off tackle but watch the pad level and watch what mr wise does to oj on the inside boom and now people get off me get away from me i'm just bouncing around it how about will justice number 74 pulling around if you get that much motion going to be a big play every time. You know, Philip Fulmer and Nick Saban, David Cutcliffe, all those SEC coaches are glad he's no longer around. Oliver hammered 
at the 19-yard line, and all the momentum has shifted. James Smith on the tackle. You look at that scoring summary. Eight plays, 70 yards, 338. Whitlock had three carries for 20 yards. Jacobs, his third touchdown run of the night. Three touchdowns in less than two and a half quarters. Off to a heck of a start. In the offensive line now for SIU is better picking up the stunts, better pad level. They look confident, and that's what a running game is. You just kind of build this machine that just keeps going. Now it's running full blast. If you're SEMO, you've got to answer. You've got to score or you're going to be in some serious trouble. Shotgun, give, inside. Running room. Oliver across the 25-30. Breaks another tackle. 35 will be brought down at the 38-yard line and maybe the most successful play of this football game for SEMO's offense. Yeah, Oliver, Tafu, they have the ability to make people miss. But again, let's work it outside. Let's get them in open field. They know how to run to daylight when I say run to daylight you follow your blockers nothing inside the hole now let's jump out and make something but watch how they can make people miss that's the key they need to get more of it they've been successful all night three receivers again shotgun formation first and ten at the 39 yard line 10 44 to play in the third quarter good enough swing it out to Oliver tries to cut it back up the middle but trips up off on that turf and again it's great turf here and that's how you we walked around on it before the game it's a, it's a nice playing surface well it's a nice playing surface when you want to talk about Ashley yeah when it's not grass it, when it's not grass it's fine it, it, it's a lot better than what we played down in the Houston Astrodome with but it's still Astro turf I'm a man of grass because you know what I was slow and everybody on grass is slow <laughs> we'll go no further with that one there buddy we will not <laughs> touch that one Shotgun formation, hurry up offense, second and ten, no gain after the swing pass. Good enough to throw, comes up, wide receiver screen, two men missed, and OG OG is off to the races, across the 50, inside the 45, to the 43-yard line, and I know you like this kid. He is big at 6'4 and 210 pounds. Well, they've, they've had so much success tonight working on the outside. Again, they're getting some good protection up front, a low play action. Now get the lineman down the field, Adam OG. Hey, one-on-one -on -one against these quarterbacks, the cornerbacks of Southern Illinois. They cannot handle him. Put him in the open field. He's got the ability to make people miss. I love these skilled people for SEMO tonight. And, and here they come, moving, trying to answer, trailing 21 to three. Good enough, back to throw, gonna take a shot deep. Throws it up in the corner, and it's gonna be incomplete. Almost intercepted. Great coverage by Brandon Bruner from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Yeah, it was just simple mano, mano, mano coverage. We call it mano, man, mano, mano. Hey, it's me against you, but that's an excellent job by Bruner. Staying with the receiver, let it not line, but two-way street to go. Gets on the inside. Right when the receiver looks, he looks as he's a little shaken up here, number 21. Brandon Bruner again. Man coverage, it's 100% concentration on your receiver. Watch Bruner. He's going to turn and look at the ball at the same time the receiver does. And he was actually, that ball, I, he just did a good job on the jam. The receiver really had no chance on that. That was number two for uh, Simo. Brian Matthews. Brian Matthews. He just didn't have a chance off the release. The ball was underthrown, but I'll tell you what, Bruner, good job of concentrating on your receiver, turning when the receiver does. Excellent man coming. Brian Matthews, of course, transferring over after East Tennessee State dropped their football program. He was the number two receiver there. And Bruner, the transfer from North, Northeast Oklahoma A&M. Yeah, number two, Brian Matthews. Again, another tall receiver, 6'3", 215 pounds. Bruner comes out of the football game and will get his replacement in just one moment. They don't go that direction. They go underneath to the tight end. This time, it's Bill Coleman. Number 86 for Southeast Missouri. It'll set up a third and more, much more manageable. Well, when you're in dime defense, those two safeties are going to drop 20 yards. They're not going to let anybody get behind. Take the underneath, take the route, pick up the five yards. Hey, you, you've got to move the football now. Now here's a big third down for Simo as they get near the red zone again. Three receivers split wide to the left. Good enough. And the Indians of Simo on the move. OG OG. Motion man to the wide side, good enough to throw. Looks now has to step up, under pressure, throws it off his man, and it's almost intercepted. Oh my, we almost had six the other way as Royal Whitaker saw himself on the highlight shows all across the state. The Ro Royal Whitaker staying at home, knowing that the quarterback's under pressure. He's watching the quarterback's eyes all the way. This is where I think Simo's got to look to run it maybe a little bit against that type of defense. But hey, number 34, Royal Whitaker, 
The hands. That's why he's a linebacker, not a defensive back. How about this decision? Fourth down, going for it. What do you got to lose? Got to go for it at this point in the game. This could be a game that could change the whole momentum of the game right here. Tafu in the backfield. Did they dare run a draw on fourth and four? Three receivers. Shotgun. Good enough to throw. Comes underneath. Complete. A big hit. It's going to be right on the marker. We're going to have to wait and see where they spot this one. Oliver with the catch. And that's the replacement for Bruner. Brashear with the tackle. They're yeah, going to spot it right there. I mean, this is right the yard line. We're on, Rich. It is close, but he, again, Oliver coming out of the, you know, he's split wide. He's got to remember where the first down marker is. Push your route just a little before. You see how he's coming back to the ball? He's got to push that. If he comes up short here, it's because he just shorted on his route a little bit. And think about it, we had that in the second quarter as well. On a third down situation, it was inches short. They had to punt. That's punt. And here, and again, in the red zone, this will be the key play, I think, of the game right here tonight. We'll see the measurement. The OBC officials, Ernie Briggs and his crew, say it's a first down. I'm wrong. They got it. it, it well, glasses. Well, you're going right with the marker, and, and once the change came across, it was a little bit different. Folks, it's been tough out here with the Harleys all night long. It's in the third quarter. It's almost past my bedtime. We're hanging in there, though. It's getting late. It is getting late. Grandpa. Simo's hanging in there, though. They're moving the ball back in the red zone. Let's see if they can be successful on this drive. Oliver in the backfield. Good enough, and the Indians on the move. First down, football rest at the 33-yard line. Three receivers, shotgun formation, and there's going to be flags everywhere. The tight end slash receiver, Bill Coleman, this time really did think he was playing arena football and thought he could get a head start in the yo-yo formation. He did think so, but I'm going to tell you what. If you watch that defense, they're in a nickel, which means five defensive backs. Watch that corner on the top side. If he plays off, let's see if they hit for the quick screen on the outside where they've had so much success getting their receivers the ball in open field for a big play. That's the fifth penalty on SIU. SIU, no penalties in this football game. In the first game of the year, that's, that's discipline. Shotgun, three receivers, now first and 15. Give underneath Oliver. He'll get back to the uh, original line of scrimmage, maybe a yard short. It'll bring up second and 11, a four-yard gain there but again they're at four down territory they can manage things differently yes they can but again penalties in the red zone you, i mean turnovers and penalties in the red zone are it just it's it makes it so much harder now it takes away what you have for your offensive plays to call you can't afford it it's magnified and it's been a problem for simo all night got to find a way to get it to og og he's been their weapon on the outside he's at the top of your screen he and brian matthews the two receivers there Good enough in the shotgun formation. Drop to throw, looks for OG, OG, and he overthrows it. Had him open, might not have had much running room, but it would have been a third and much more manageable than third and 11. Much more manageable, and that time, it looked like, it looked like good enough, had a little bit of pressure. He delivered the ball a little bit too soon. He didn't really follow through, probably not the best mechanic. He didn't probably really set his feet well. Let's take a look at him in the shotgun. Does, he's trying to roll out, he sees his receiver. Doesn't really get a chance to set his feet. Just gets a little bit of air underneath the football. And that's a pass he's got to make on the outside. That's the one he's got to make again. See him set in the pocket a little. Oh, there's the pressure from the defensive end, number 90. James Field makes the force to go a little hot. Third and 11. SIU comes on a corner blitz. Good enough. Throws to the end zone, and he overthrows his receiver by about 12 yards. It's intercepted. And I guess... Akasanya said, I'm just going to catch it. Obviously, it would have brought up a fourth down situation. Simo would have gone for it. He said, I'll run under there, take it. We're going to take over and, and add the football, give it to Nick Jacobs, Whitlock, and the rest of the crew. Well, OG this time is running a post pattern, and the quarterback, good enough, the way the safety was playing, he thought he could have bent it and made it straighter up the field. Watch where he delivers the football. He gets some time. Now he gets some air on it, but he thinks that OG's going to bend it more towards the goalpost, almost like a seam route. Miscommunication between wide receiver and, and quarterback and the defense. I know it's early, but how about this? Upset number one, Delaware goes down in week number one. New Hampshire beats Delaware 24-21. Could SIU go on to win this one? They beat me number one team in the land. First and 10 for SIU following the Akasanya interception in the end zone for the Salukis, and it is Whitlock to the outside, and he is brought down at the 26-27 yard line. We mentioned that Delaware goes down in the opener. Again, what does it really mean early September, whether you're one or two or what have you? 
other than a pride factor, a win here. And for all intents and purposes, SIU is going to be looking around and saying, we've got a number one next to our name. Yes, they do. And SEMO right now, I mean, they've had the chances. But again, turnovers in the red zone, penalties in the red zone. They will come back to haunt you every time. Southeast Missouri, it's been costly to them. Instead of that third and long, they would have had second and short after a nice draw. But the holding, uh, the offside play, you just can't afford it. And it's been costly to them. Terry Jackson, only five touches, two of those at the end of the half, and has not played here in the second half. Whitlock has done most of the running, and he is off to the race, tripped up at the 40-yard line. I tell you what, he was one man away from hitting that fifth gear. You may have the H2 Hummer in Jacobs. What do you have right there? That's just a 928S Porsche, folks. I mean, he's just going to take it, but he does a good job of getting behind this tackle. And what I love about SIU, hey, they stay behind their blockers. Now let's get him into open field. And hey, this guy, R.K. Whitlock, R.K. Whitlock, his ability to make people miss in the open field, he's going to be that super back that they like. I tell you what, it's a great change of pace. And right now, he is uh, performing like we expected, like we were told he would. First down at the 40-yard line. Three receivers, Zamberski to throw. It's Little at the 48, now cuts back, makes a man miss. Dives down to the 46-yard line. I really like Brent Little and what we've seen from him. He's only a junior, but he, he really is very confident at that wide receiver spot. Six foot, 185 pounds, excellent separation, runs his routes precisely. And right now, SIU has done a good job of coming back to the weak side, looking where they can get some one-on-one -on -one message. And here's Brent Little on the quick out. Now get going north and south. Let's make someone miss. Look at the arm stamp. Again, excellent job of running his route. Kicks the ball, now gets going north and south. Let's get a little arm sugar in there and look at the effort that you get out of number six. First down, moving the football. Give left side, blockers in front. Whitlock is off to the race. Oh, he trips up. I tell you what, we can talk all night about these running backs, but I think we need to look at number 31. JT Wise, sophomore fullback. Look at him lead this play right here. I, I tell you what, when you watch on these guys, the way they're blocking, but let's watch the backside that, that, that Whitlock, Wise, and he acts as the second man through on the power. Hey, you know what? I could run through that hole. I could make it for 10 yards, and R.K. Whitlock, he gets tripped up. That's fine material. He owes the offensive lineman twice the amount of pizzas for falling down the open field. I tell you, Wise keeps playing like this when Wiser, the normal starting at fullback, comes back. They're going to have a little competition there. Motion man on first down. Football at the 29. They're going to call a timeout. 5.37 to play in the third quarter, and SIU calls a timeout leading 21-3 to and knocking on the door again. This offense, the second half, has run very smooth. Yes, it has the offensive line up front, but what they've done now in their run blocking is they've gone what we call a power O play. You pull the backside guard, and instead of the tight end following, let's put the fullback as the second blocker through. Great athletic ability. The way that just, um, Will Justice pulls, Justin Ritz, now you put Wise behind him, it just creates a natural play. And right now, the big men up front are beginning to dominate the game. Scott Warman's been hanging out, having some cold beverages, but he's decided to work here in the third quarter. <laughs> Scotty, what do you have for us? <laughs> Thanks, I guess, Blake. We are here with the athletic director at St. Louis, uh, Southeast Missouri State. That's Don Caverman, and a pretty good ball game we got going on right here. So far, yes. I hope it continues this way. One of the reasons we're going to bring you in, they've got a special thing that uh, some of your football players have put together. It's called TD for a Cure. Tell the folks at home about that. Our senior co-captain, Derek Coots, uh, lost a friend of cancer this last summer and approached us about doing this as a fundraiser to help St. Jude's Children's Hospital, and we're just happy to do it. And you got a mighty fine donation about a month ago from uh, someone that you didn't expect to. Well, Karen Stupples of the LPGA, maybe the hottest player on the tour right now, is a touring pro for Dalhousie Country Club and happened to be attending our football media day, heard Derek's pitch and was very impressed, made a $1,000 donation to kick it off. So we were very happy about that. And you guys are going to do this throughout the season or throughout the entire school year? Throughout the season. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it, Dave. Thank you. All right, uh, Blake, back to you. Thank you, Scotty. And uh, I, I tell you what, Good stories like that, we don't always hear. They're not obviously publicized enough. We always hear the negative stuff. We always hear the negative about the players, but those are the type of things that people will always remember. And let me tell you, folks, there's more good than there is bad. Following the timeout, 5.37 to play in the third quarter. SIU up 21-3. to Motion man. High formation. Archie Whitlock to the right side. This time he's hit after a gain of a couple. And I tell you what, you can see on the SEMO sideline right now, Rich, 
that, that the momentum is obviously all on the opposite side. They played so tough, so hard for the first two and a half quarters. Right now, they look tired and worn down. Yeah, well, that's what happens when the running game begins to happen. You know, I keep talking about Justin Rich at the right guard for them and Elmer McDaniel. This guy doesn't say a lot, but up front, you know what? He's just moving people off the line of scrimmage right now. Go forth in motion. Play action. Looks for his tight end. Sam Bruschi's going to keep it, and he's smart enough to know to keep it inbounds. He could have easily run out of bounds right there and avoided the hit. He said, you know what? I'm going to keep it inbounds and let this clock move. We've got an 18-point lead. Great job on the run fake. Now you're going to come out the back door on the boot. Samberski does a good job of protecting the football, but watch the defense flow. Now he's going to come out the back door. He's looking for his tight end coming across the middle. There's nothing that's going to happen. Now, wrap it up. That's what I don't like to see. Get two hands around the football. Come off the costly play. Third and four, and if Simo wants to have a chance in this football game, they've got to get a stop right here. I formation. It's been the RQ Whitlock show most of the second half. Option left side, Whitlock gets it. We'll try and get outside, breaks the tackle, has got a first down and more inside the 10, down inside the five yard line. And, well, we talk about Jacobs being a power back, Rich. When he gets outside and he sees all that green, he knows how to hit the fifth gear, and that's why he picks up all the yards. He's over 100 now tonight. RQ Whitlock, just the burst. Let's just watch him, folks. What he does, he sets up behind Weiss again on the pitch. Now watch the four, 31, the fullback, get out front. Now it's up to the big man. Make somebody miss, and you know what? When you get a fullback in your face, hit you in the snot box, you're not going to be able to make arm tackle. RQ Whitlock on a big run. No Brandon Jacobs this time. Whitlock's done the work. Coach Kill will try and reward him. 107 yards on the night for Whitlock. Most of those here in the third quarter. Give Whitlock left side. We'll try and find the end zone, and he does. His first touchdown of the year. Domination by the offensive line of Southern Illinois. The Salukis now are putting the hammer down on the Indians of Southeast Missouri. 110 yards on the night for the little man. But watch up front again. Watch Kupek, the tight end, coming in motion. Watch the block he gets on the kick out. What does that allow? That allows Weiss to get right inside. Now, you know what, folks? It's one-on-one. -on -one. It's the little man running over two people. I love it. Extra point attempt with 4.08 to play is up and good. Just over four minutes, and it's now 28 to 3. It was 14 to 3. Now two unanswered touchdowns in the second half. And you look at that, 18 carries for 110 yards. And how about that bottom one? 64 yards on the drive. Archie Whitlock, they're doing an excellent job of calling on the play now, running away from the tight end, coming back to the weak side. And Archie Whitlock, they're showing you what that back means. These are the different weapons that SIU has, whether it's wide receiver Brent Little or the running back Jacobs in the middle or Whitlock. We haven't even seen Jackson very much tonight. Their ability to make people miss and that second level speed. Jackson only five carries for 15 yards, a transfer from Minnesota. You look at all these transfers from Coffeyville. a little bit of a pipeline right there and he'll take them. Oh yes, they will. And the attitude on these guys. And you know what's so great about it? These guys know when they come here, someone like a Jacob, people think, well, he transfers to Auburn, to SIU. Why would anybody continue to watch him? Folks, this guy showed that he wasn't going to have a chance at Auburn. I'm going to come here. I want to be a player. I want to compete, show what I can do on the field, and they're doing that tonight. I tell you, as you mentioned earlier, scouts are going to find you. I I NFL scouts will find you no matter where you play. You look at some of the, the top players in the NFL, at linemen, Larry Allen's a kid, you know, small school. You go down the roster of where some of Jerry Rice, Walter Payton weren't playing at USC in Miami. So the starting defensive end probably for the Kansas City Chiefs this year, Jared Allen, who led the sacks last year and won double A from Idaho State. Kickoff here in Simo. Oliver at the five, trailing by 25. Gets another nice hole, cuts it to the middle and across the 25, up to the 29-yard line. He's done a nice job returning the football tonight. They've done a nice job moving the football tonight. But every time they get around that 30, 35, 40-yard line, bad things happen. And, and it's just when you get down to that level, when you get down to that part of the field, it's concentration. It's focus. Everything you do is now magnified. And we've seen two major mistakes, a penalty and a turnover. It has cost them two drives and the momentum in this game. SIU has turned around and come right back down the field. And, we, and we've seen two turnovers, the fumble right before the half and the interception yes. on the last drive to go with that, uh, those five penalties. 
good enough. Under center this time with two backs. He's got mostly shotgun here in the second half, but with four minutes to play in the third, he goes under center. Give, right side, nowhere to go. Misses a couple of tackles, and Oliver will turn nothing into a little something-something. Yeah, Oliver just turning an ugly play into a halfway decent play, but this is the ability that he has. They've got to find ways to get the football into his hands more. In the first half, they did an excellent job of swinging him out of the back of and you know what? They have moved the football, but I keep going back to it again and again. Turnovers will kill you in every game, and right now, this is what's costing them. Take a look at those numbers. 135 to 57 folks, but the big ones you don't put up there is the turnovers. Shotgun, good enough to throw. Comes across the middle, hits his big tight end, up across the 45 to the 46, an 11-yard gain. They've run that play two or three times. That's their most consistent play to Ray Goodson. No, it is, because in this nickel defense, you're going to have the you're going to have the mismatch against number five, Frank Johnson, a tight end of Ray Goodson's size, a 6'4", 230 pounds. He's just going to come across the middle. There's just no way any safety is going to stay with him, and they do a good job of finding the hole in the zone, sitting down, delivering the football. Good enough in the shotgun. Oliver, the motion man. Good enough, steps up in the pocket, swings it out. He's got a man out there, and there are four, five, six, and a huge block. There were six Salukis there to make a play, and we may have our block of the night. Right there, you hear the SEMO crowd with the ooh and the ahs. Royal Whitaker, I think, is that number 34, Royal Whitaker? I think he is searching for his head right now. Watch number 34. He's going to line this up as a beeline. He's got the back out of the backfield, number two receiver. Here he is. He's going to settle down. Now watch the block right here. It's coming. Watch number 17. Good send the tight end. Decapitation. Declipper. Decleater. I don't know what you want to call it. Deboning. Ouch. Everything. That was an ouch play. Second and two. Football in Saluki territory. Good enough to throw. Swings it out again and nowhere to go. It's a loss of six and it'll bring up third long and again you have good things going three or four positive plays in a row and you have a slip it, it, it's just something always is coming up penalties slips fumbles mistakes well you know here it's it, you can here it's not so much but when you get in the red zone you've had trouble getting down there all night it's magnified it's cost them on three drives turnovers right now you score on one of them it's a whole different momentum now you're battling their defensive linemen are pinning their ears back coming after you makes it much more difficult good enough in the shotgun for Formation third and seven at their own 49 yard line. Has time. Now we'll have to roll out to the right. Getting pressure. Throws it deep downfield. Scott Oliver. And it's incomplete. Do you like what you've seen from good enough? Do you like the transfer from Arizona State? Did some nice things. Do you like him as a quarterback? I see him right now pretty comfortable in the pocket. He's still having some trouble, I think, with the reads and where the receivers need to go. His ability to throw the football. It, it, it is pretty good right now. I'm seeing some pretty good accuracy. He stands in the pocket. I think right now what it is is his players, working with him as his players, they need to spend more time on the field where he wants to go with the football. And, hey, he's got to make that catch. Oliver's just got to make the catch. Simon off with a great punt. It's high in the sky. We'll hit at the one and go into the end zone. This is a heck of a weapon there as a punter. Two minutes to play in the third quarter. But when we're talking about a team's punter, it's usually not good. And, and I'm going to tell you, as a quarterback, you've got to be the general on the field. And let me tell you something. If he needs to do some talking on the sidelines, he needs to do it right now. He needs to tell his guys, get out of the huddle, get up to the line of scrimmage. We can't afford these penalties. You can't afford the turnovers. Right now, he's moving. He's moving the ball around well on the perimeter. It's just that everyone somewhere along the line losing concentration, making a big, big mistake. It's costly for Simo. Terry Jackson getting an opportunity. will be the back here. Five carries, 15 yards for the transfer from Minnesota. Two minutes to play in the third. It's 28 to three. SIU on top. Toss left, penalties on the play, and Jackson comes in and lays the wood to Mike Miller. He does, and when he got done the play, he stood up, had, had a few had a few words, as I think we have a penalty on the play. The motion. But again, watch the offensive line. Excellent job of staying on your man, move your feet, pulling the backside guard. Now, Terry Jackson, watch the pad level, folks. That's what the big time runner, you don't get a good shot on him, he's delivering the feet on you. 
152 to play in the third. The gorgeous night in Carbondale. Huge crowd here for this rivalry. Simo was number 22 in the land a year ago, and that's how you went down there and beat him 28 to seven. Simo scored on the final play of the game to even get on the board. This year, SIU number two in the land, and they have dominated really from about midway in the second quarter after that late in that second quarter, they got the turnover. But this third quarter has been all Salukis. It's been all Salukis, and we can go back to that one play at the end of the second quarter down the red zone, and they fumble the football. Shotgun formation on first and 15. Samberski takes the low snap, and now just trying to make something happen. Makes one man miss. That's what he brings to the table. You can't teach that right there. His ability to run with the football over 800 yards rushing in his career. He does an excellent job of holding on to the football. He's a good leader, good pocket awareness, knows when he has to take off. Let's watch number 12. Not the best of snap. Now he sees it's a breakdown. Now let me get to daylight. Let me make something happen. Gets both hands around the football, and that's what you want to see out of your quarterback. Now get down on the ground. But there's a guy, good pocket awareness, sees it's breaking down. Let me get out and make some positive yardage. 13 yards on the gain, under a minute to play in the third, second and short for SIU. Give left side, Jackson, he's got the first down. He keeps those legs churning up to the 34-yard line. Did you have to think somewhere in his mind, he's saying, hey, I've been sitting all night long. I'm going to prove to these guys I need to be the guy out there. Yeah, when you watch SIU's running backs here, we go back to last year with Tom Kutsos and Muhammad abdul Kadir. They all run with that high leg lift. They've got great forward lean, great pad level. And that's something, you know what, sometimes you can't coach. They just have to know to get down. A lot of the younger kids run straight up and down. They take a lot of shots. These guys deliver the wood every time when they run the football. First and 10, football rests at the 34-yard line. Jackson remains the back. Samberski will throw, complete to the big fella. Number 88, Phil, go forth, does exactly that. And the, you know, SIU right now is having the run of the mill. They're doing a great job of mixing it up with the different plays, running inside to the outside. Now we've got two men on the outside. Watch Joel Samberski on the quick set. Watch where he delivers that football. Right lead of the receiver, right where he had to. Now the big man go forth, picks up the first down. Freshman with the catch on what will be the final play of the third quarter. When we come back, SIU will try and complete this one, get a W, and if they do, be the new number one in one double-A football. It was the Whitlock show in the third quarter. Can Simo pull off a comeback? We'll find out when we come back. Where people teach well. One of the great... And there you see an injured player. That does not look good for Brandon Kohler from San Bruno, California. Transfer from San Mateo Community College. Yeah, it does. It's been a tough night for him stopping. It looks like something with the wrist and arm. Pretty, doesn't look very good right now. Probably a broken bone in the hand. Give right side. Jackson breaks two tackles, three tackles, and across to the 45-yard line. I tell you what, one thing that we haven't talked a lot about, Rich, the running game is great. But Sam Bursky's 5 of 5 from 61 yards in that third quarter, just doing the little things to make sure his team wins. Doing the little things, and you know what? Right now, they've done an excellent job. They've not had many mistakes on the field, and that's the important thing as your quarterback. He's doing a great job of being the general on the field, getting people out of the huddle, calling the plays, and right now you can see the positive attitude with the running game. They're just demoralizing the defense of Southeast Missouri. Second and short. Motion man to the right side. Gibb, Jackson again. Big hole up the middle. He's got the first down. And it tells you something else, too, Rich. When the defensive players are the ones coming off with the wrist and shoulders and leg injuries, that the hits are coming from the offensive guys. Yes, it is. And it's all arm tackles right now. And you can't do it against these young guys. And you see Terry Jackson. Now you're seeing the strength of this man. 195 pounds. But how about the big guys up front? McDaniel, Rich, Aikens, Justice. And we can't forget number 31. Mr. Wise. If Mr. Wise doesn't want to play fullback, put him in as offensive guard the way he's been blocking. He could make it happen. First and 10 inside the 40, 13.50 to play in the ball game. SIU dominating 28 to 3. Samberski to throw and go for the knockout punch. Throws to the end zone. Down at the one yard line. Now they'll say incomplete pass. Little had it on a great adjustment here. And Rich, you're going to have the best view of this on the replay. But a great call to try and knock this game out. Little couldn't hang on. 
Brent Little showing some speed on the streak pattern down the sideline. Joel Samberski getting time up front with his offensive line. A nice passing lane. Gets some air underneath it. And now it's just one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm going to tell you, you've just got to be able to pull that football. Close. Oh. Very close to the touchdown. Very close. But you've got to hang on to that football. He got separation. And Brent Little is showing me excellent speed to be able to get that good separation from the defensive back. Samberski's first incompletion of the half. Give Jackson on the delay. Up the middle. First man does not bring Jackson down. And he will pick up 11 yards and a Saluki first down. And right now, this is what the running game does to a defense. You talk about demoralizing someone, making a team want to quit, capitulate out on the field. You just want to get off the field. And right now, Terry Jackson, this is another offensive weapon from SIU. Fresh back, fresh legs. And you look in the NFL, there are certain coaches that do that, and the fans go, why don't they open it up? Well, this is why, because in the fourth quarter, you will dominate football games if you stick to the running game, and that's what Coach Kill will do this year. Gateway Classic, running the football. Nobody does it better in one double A. Two wide receivers, Samberski under center. Again, the Jackson show continues. Pick up of three, maybe four yards. It will go under 13 minutes to play in this ball game. We can't stress enough the beautiful atmosphere that it is here tonight in Carbondale. An absolutely great crowd and a crowd that's been into this football game. Yes, it has a great crowd tonight. It started with the Harleys. And you know, I was beginning to wonder about SIU. They might have panicked a little bit in the first half, but you know what? They believe in Jerry Kill's philosophy, which is stick with the running game, pound it out. The big men up front are doing their job. And as I said, with so many weapons on offense, this is a tough team to play week in and week out. 11,000 plus here. Left side, and it's the big fella. Woo-wee! <laughs> I tell you what, you got a quarter and a half of Whitlock and, and Terry Jackson coming in as scat backs, if you will, with great speed. And all of a sudden, you look up and you go, I'm down 28-3, and here comes maybe the biggest back at any level of football right now. Here comes the H2 Hummer with a load of fuel coming straight ahead. Now watch the, <laughs> who is that number 98? That, that's 6'4", 245 pound Adam Jones. That's Adam Jones, and you know what? He weighs about 225 after that hit, but you see the forward lean of Jeff Brandon Jacobs. And we'll talk about it after this play, something that that I think you've noticed and we'll get to. I formation here, 11.50 to play in the ball game. Two receivers. Samberski, play action. Fake to give to Jacobs, will come. Whitlock's got one man to beat. 15, 10, he will find the end zone. Touchdown, SIU. The thing I've noticed is when one of the backs has some success, the other two get on the field, they want to outdo him. It's, it's, it's a great relationship, but they just want to outdo the other guy. You figured it out, Jerry Kill has completed a great job of this competitiveness between each back. Whoever gets on the field, they're trying to outdo each other. But watch R. Key Whitlock does a great job of the delayed block, now comes out. But once he catches the football, makes something happen in the open field, and watch how he goes for the end zone. Every running back's got a great nose for the end zone here from SIU. Extra point attempt is up, and it's good. We talk about the running game, but how about Mr. Samberski? Take a look. I mean, you're talking about a guy that's up near 200 yards. I mean, th this is this is an offense that's got a bunch of different weapons. Now you watch on film, which one do you stop? Well, it, it, you look at Joel Samberski, what's the most important thing? No interceptions, 12 of 17. He's done a great job of managing on the field. That's what you want out of your leader as the quarterback. I tell you what, they've got a super back. Our super back is Scott Warman. Scotty, what do you have? Hey, Blake, thanks so much. We've got uh, one of the real heroes in our country, a guy who we talked about earlier, Damon Bradford. He's supposed to be the defense coordinator, but he's got other commitments to handle with our nation, and he joins us right now as uh, you got a little unexpected visit for some of your guys here as uh, the defensive coordinator with Southeast Missouri. Yeah, I tried to get here as quick as I could. I got out of the field about five hours before the game started, and uh, actually looked quicker than that and didn't know that I was going to come here until actually I was on the road home. And I got a call and said I got two passes, so I made a detour here and uh, drove a little bit too fast to get here. And then I'm going to drive as fast as I can to get home and see my family. Now, Damon, with uh, now the Tennessee National Guard, he'll be called to Iraq. And uh, how long ago was that when they uh, made that call to you, Damon? May the 10th. And uh, how rough has it been for you not to be with your boys out here? It's been pretty tough. Um, 
you know, I miss football. I love it. I love these guys, and you know, I, I sure miss my family. How long? What? When are they telling you you're going to be heading over to Iraq? Well, I can't really talk about times and dates and stuff like that, but it's it's in the near future, and uh, hopefully we'll be home sooner than later. Damon, it's great to see you, and best of luck uh, overseas. Thanks, thanks a lot. Appreciate that is Damon Bradford, the defensive coordinator, headed to Iraq, gentlemen, here in the next few months. Blake, back to you. Thank you, Scotty, and and Rich, you've played this game so many times. People just think it's sports, but but it's about teaching. And, and I, I may argue that these kids are going to learn more from him going through this experience than they would having him there every day as a defensive coordinator. What that man's going to do is light years above anything I've ever done with my life and what you can do in college. This game is pitiful. Those young men that are going over there and what they're attempting to do in that part of the world, my hat's off. There's not enough words we can say. All I can say is, hey, buddy, be safe. God bless you. No question about that. How about that? Going to come here and go spend some time with his family this weekend as well. Kick off here following the Whitlock touchdown a reception of 20 two yards Simo on the return Oliver up across the 25 to about the 28 yard line and that's where Southeast Missouri will take over let me ask you this as you sit here it's 35 3 football game for all intents and purposes winning and losing is just about over if you're coach Billings what do you want to accomplish here what do you try and do offensively to get some momentum well you want to just continue to work on some of things you've been successful all night moving the ball pretty much you've done some good things it's just turnovers and now while you're tired, the coaches want to see the competitive attitude and how do you continue to play the game? Because you know what? You're going to learn that you're going to get in long games. You're going to get tired. You have to continue to play. That will be a big part of the game tonight. A lot of new faces on the defensive side of the ball. Complete from good enough to Brian Matthews. And when you take a look at a gorgeous night in Carbondale, it's been a wild football game. It has been a wild football game. And I'll tell you what, Southeast Missouri, and you take a look at it, and folks, I, you know, you can say it over and over again. Yeah, in the third down, so they were 2 of 10. And sometimes these things are deceiving, only 213 yards. But you know what? You were in the red zone three times. You came away with the fat zero. You don't deserve to win football games. Just like last year, they didn't score inside at the end of the third quarter when they're on the goal line, and it cost them. Elton Peterson in the backfield. He will get the carry. He's got some room to the left side, cross the 40 to the 42-yard line. And you look at this for uh, Simo, obviously at 35-3. Uh, at to three. Not that they're looking ahead, but they go to Northern Illinois. Actually, they go to Bowling Green next. SIU's got Northern Illinois. How about that start? At SIU, at Bowling Green, at Central Michigan for SEMO. Three tough road games, and that's not good for a program that started 0-5 a year ago. you got to grow up quick. And they are playing better as a team, but again, the one thing you learn how when you become a, more, a champion is it's a 60-minute game, and it's concentration every play. Dump to Oliver, across the 40. Across the 45, football is on the turf. It's loose, and we'll have to see. SIU says they have it, and guess what? Turnover, turnover, turnover. It, it, it's a momentum killer. You know, as a former player, I'm going to tell you, you go down the field. It's, it's so hard to go down the field as it is. Then when you get all the way down the field, and it, it, as, as we watch Oliver on the fumble, I mean, now you're making something happen. Wrap up with the football. And this is where when you're going to, if you're going to move plays like this, if you're going to be juking, you've got to make sure you get both hands around the football. Again, it's just a lack of concentration. And it's so costly, and it did tonight in the red zone. All right, let's put you in Coach Kill's shoes. He's been successful, but you're going to be in his shoes. How long do you leave your starters in this football game? Well, you're a number one team. You've got bigger things to look forward to than the next 10 minutes of this football game, do you not? Well, I think so, but what he wants to make sure is I think that they've had some times in the game, like you said at the halftime when we spoke to him, they played good in some times and bad in the other. He wants to get the rhythm of this offense going because he knows all these players are going to be in the game. They've got to get a chance to work with the starters. Brandon Jacobs, the tailback, the transfer from Auburn. has got two touchdowns tonight. He takes it on the delay. 45, 40, flags down. He's off to the races. The H2 Hummer is loose, and he's down inside the 10-yard line. Flag is down here. We talked about a burst. That's the first time tonight we've seen the burst. He turned on the burst. But that's also somebody who's getting comfortable with the blocking and understanding the schemes. And this is where I say we have a holding, it looks like, in the offensive line. and brings back a great run. 
Jordan Jacobs, and that's what we like to see. He's got his arm around one of the defenders uh, for Simo there, but there you see the uh, the hold. Yeah, it is, and, and I'm not really sure where the hold was. I don't think we could get it in the replay, but again, you see Brandon Jacobs, and that's the burst that they're talking about, and this is what the NFL scouts want to see. They want to see a guy who can take something and make it into a big play every time, and he has that ability, and that's why I'll tell you what, all the people down there in Southeastern Conference Land are probably pretty happy he's not around anymore. There is no doubt. Uh, obviously, Coach Tuberville's excited. He's got Cadillac back and uh, don't have the expectations they had a year ago before Pete Carroll and USC came in and took care of the old Auburn Tigers. Ten minutes to play in the ballgame. 35-3, SIU leads Simo. Samberski to throw. Complete, cross midfield, little again. I'll tell you what, I like the way he catches the football. He reminds me of a guy that I see a lot in Derek Mason. Shifty, he's not extra quick, he's not extra big, he just gets the job done. You look up, he's had a great night. And he runs great routes. Watch number six as he gets separation. Now he catches the football. Now let's turn, let's get around, get going north and south. He's not someone who takes a long time getting out of his break. Excellent job on his routes. He gets separation from the defensive back. Now he gets going north and south. He makes people miss. That's what you got to love out of Brent Little. Not in great effort, but I'm telling you, wide receiver is not about speed. It's all about your conviction to catching the football. Brent Little does a great job every play. Injury there for Southeast Missouri. Number 27 is down. But it appears to be an injury. But I tell you what, this has been SIU as you look at this. And you've followed 1AA. You've seen this league for a long, long time. What you've seen in the first three and a half plus quarters, is this a team that can duplicate the 1983 season, which they won a national championship here on this campus? Well, you were beginning to wonder about the running backs right now. And in, there were some times here in the games I talked about the offensive line struggled a little bit with their blocking. But when you bring three new running backs in, you expect some problems. And tonight, though, they've overcome that. They're now comfortable. They know where to go with the football. They understand their offensive line. And you know what? It's hard to put in words. You just have to be on the field. You get a feel for what your running back's going to do in the game, how to block. And right now, you're seeing three offensive weapons in the backfield that are going to be pretty much unstoppable. Who else do you like in the gateway? Obviously, Western Illinois, Western Kentucky are in there. Is Franey, it, Franey, the running back over at UNI, he's a, he, he's a good one. He's he, another one. He'll put play. a challenge to this SIU defense. Well, you know, I mean, I don't think we should just go ahead and hand no. the, them the gateway title. If you've ever watched these gateway games, I'll tell you what, you never know who's going to win these things. It's so competitive in this division. But the one thing you will see when you watch a gateway team is the competitiveness on the field and their ability to run the football. This is a running conference. And here you see Southern Illinois with 25 first place votes. You and I, any one of these guys can beat anyone on any given day in this league. But it is such a competitive team, and I think they do one of the best jobs of run blocking. High formation on second and three. Give right side, it's the big fella. Brandon Jacobs with all kinds of blockers in front. He's got the first down right at the 36 yard line, and that clock continues to run. If you're Tim Billings in the Ohio Valley Conference, obviously a tough start. They've got some tough road trips as well. They were picked to finish fourth. Eastern Kentucky and Jacksonville State, two good football programs. And then you've got Samford in there as well. So the OVC should be fun to watch as well. Look at those second half possessions. That's what you draw up at halftime, isn't it? That's what you draw up. And this is where the running game becomes effective. It takes time. You get finding out what the defensive line is doing. Their blitzes. You get that confidence. You begin to wear people out by the fourth quarter. They don't want to come up and tackle. First down, Samberski gets Jacobs' big hole. Football was almost stripped. He spun around, gets inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. And, and you're exactly right. At this point, your legs are hurt. You're sore. You're down 32. You're playing a team that is great. Your rival. And now all of a sudden you're going, man, they keep throwing this 255-pound guy right at me. Yeah, you got 300-pound linemen up front, and then all of a sudden you've got a 255-pound back that, you know what, he is a legitimate 4 5, five 40 guy. He's got the burst. Now you've got 600 pounds practically falling on top of you every play. Nobody can hold up that long in a game. Hollingshead to the top of your screen at the wide receiver. He is the motion man. Toss right side, Jacobs. Makes a man miss, he's off to the races. This is gonna be six points for SIU. 29 yards on the score. 
and our boy Mr. White, JT. I'll tell you what, Brandon Jacob. And you talked about bringing the starters out of the game. I'm going to tell you why on this play. Watch Brandon Jacobs. Watch him follow his fullback, number 31, right here. Watch him follow. Now watch him make the cut right off inside. Let's them set up their blocks, gets behind his offensive guard, and the big man is away and running for another touchdown. That's why you keep the guys in the game. Four touchdowns, get them comfortable, understanding the schemes. Extra point attempt to extend the lead is up and good. 7.54 to play in the ball game. It's all Salukis. 42 to 3, they lead Simo. At 42 to 3, the Salukis are running away with it. But let's talk about run blocking. Let's watch the right guard, number 69, not two, Vicinia, get out front. But watch number 31, Mr. Wise. See how he gets on his man. Now Brandon Jacobs is going to make the break. And watch how he makes Mr. Antoine miss. That's what I talk about, staying on the field with your starters, getting comfortable, learning the schemes. That's why Mr. Jacobs is going to be a great player, not only in this league, but in the next league. You mentioned Vicinia. He's only a freshman from Independence, Missouri. Coaches thought he might start. He, he's that good at the freshman spot, and he did a heck of a job there. 6'1", 295 pounds. How about this? Here is Mr. Jacobs' numbers. Not a bad way to start your Saluki career. Absolutely unbelievable night on the ground for Brandon Jacobs, who's hiding over there on the sidelines, hanging out, going, you know what? My work is done here. And no matter who they plug into the system, as you see, Brandon Jacobs, 18 rushes, 106 yards, four touchdowns on the night. And you know what? It's been hard running, running over people, running around people. This man is comfortable with the SIU running system. Simo takes over at their own 20. Good enough throws, incomplete. That's just tired. That's tired, it's 42 to three. But I'll say this, and you've played for coaches and no coaches. This is where Coach Billings is gonna coach his most, right here. It's 42 to three. If he sees a kid out there not giving great effort, they won't be out there very long. No, they won't be. But this is also where you have to learn how to concentrate, because you're gonna have games where it's gonna be competitive down to the wire, and you have to continue to play when you're tired and you feel like you're worn out. Let's see what Simo can do if they can move the football. 7.51 to play. Good enough to throw. Complete right at the 30-yard line. They'll say the clock should run. That's right on the marker. We'll have to see where they spot it exactly. Nice throw, nice catch. I tell you, you've mentioned it. We keep harping on it. Good enough. 19 of 32 for 166 yards. He's done a nice job. He's done a good job of working the sidelines, but again, you can't you can't overemphasize what a turnover in the red zone, especially at the end of the second half, what it means to the momentum for your team. Three receivers, they give him the good spot in the first down. Hard snap, jump, no flat. Good enough steps up, hits his back, and he is hammered in the backfield. The play will pick up about six yards, but good enough was taken down back at about the 27-yard line. He's kind of looking around going, come on, guys, protect me. It, it is tough when you're an offensive lineman in this position because the T linemen are teeing off at you. It's like pass rush to in practice. You are at the disadvantage. They're coming at you. You're fighting everything you can do to make sure the quarterback doesn't take a shot. But sometimes it just doesn't work out. Three receivers after the pickup of seven. Good enough in the shotgun formation. SIU dropping four, five, six DBs and linebackers, and the four guys are just pinning their ear backs and ears back and coming after him. Neely gets the carry. He goes nowhere. Heck of a job. We haven't called his name all, a lot tonight, but Cortez McBerry has done a nice job from that safety position, the senior from Cincinnati. Yeah, they've done a relatively good job in playing the nickel and the dime in the zone, making sure people didn't get behind them. There were a couple times they gave up some big class, class plays over the middle, but overall they've done an effective job in the zone shutting down that three and four wide receiver look. And that's kind of been the theory is keep everything in front of you and Simo's offense will make a mistake before they can make a big play. Yes, they did. They've done a good job, but they, somehow they've always broken down when they've gotten near the red zone. Screen pass set up there and it will go nowhere. How about that? Defensive lineman still being aware. Here comes the screen. Get your hands up. Well, you know, the one thing they've also got to incorporate, they've got to learn how, if they're going to go to the spread, they've got to incorporate some type more of a running game. When you sit back and they know it's pass every time, those defensive backs are just standing behind. You've got to make sure that they come up and play both sides of the offense. 
run and pass. When you lose one aspect of it, it makes it for a long night. 6.05 to play, fourth and four. And Simonoff, who's had a heck of a night, averaging up over 48 yards a punt, gets off another great punt inside the 20. Well, down. Oh, almost gets touched by an SIU player, but this one will be inside the 10 again. His average will be over 50 yards tonight. Nice night. It, it's been a very good night. Special, te special teams have been good. Kickoff returns, punts, and everything. Just wish the offense could be better. We'll take a break. Come back with the final 552 on the OVC Gateway Challenge live from Carbondale. 14 to 3 at the half, but take a look at these total yard numbers and we'll get you the quarterback change in just a moment. Domination over 500 yards, or at least it will be here in just a moment. John Carnes, the quarterback, give right side. Got a new running back in there. That was Anton Jackson. Number four, junior from Rockwood Summit up in St. Louis, Mo. I'll tell you what, as they say in history, all roads lead to Rome. Well, I say all running back roads lead to SIU. How many do they have on this squad? And no matter who they put in, they do a great job. 525 to play. Carnes, the quarterback, a freshman from Blue Springs South over in your neck of the woods in yes. Blue Springs, Missouri. Yes, from Blue Springs, Mr. Carnes has a good ability to throw the football. I think he's going to have a bright future here at SIU. Option, he keeps it. He goes nowhere. But clock continues to run. It'll bring up a third down situation. We'll go under five minutes to play. And you look at it, right at 500 yards of offense for SIU. They put up 42 points and 500 yards of offense week in and week out. They're going to be playing for a long, long time this year. You know, it's just a system that Jerry Kill instills in his players. And you see an offense that didn't panic. We saw him in the first half kind of up and down. Weren't really sure about the run blocking, having some problems. But you know what? They never lost confidence. They continue to do the job out in the field, and that's what a good running game will give. You'll be eventually demoralized with defense. Carnes to throw. Goes across the middle. Complete to his tight end. It'll be enough for a first down. Micah Turner. You gotta like his nickname. Seuss. Yeah, they said he's built like a Greek guy. And we, I talk about Greek with the Olympics and everything. Notice that segue. Turn I'll bring that in, in there, there, young fella. 6'4", 250-pound tight end. Moves the chains, and more importantly for Coach Kill, can, keeps that clock rolling. Uh, I, I, I think if anyone in the offensive line was called Zeus, that would be fine material. I mean, there was not many guys you would call Zeus that played being tackle to tackle. I formation. We'll go under four minutes to play in the ball game. All Salukis give up the middle, nowhere to go. And you know, when I've been watching the Salukis for year in and year out, and the confidence now that they have, they kind of look like Youngstown a few years ago when they had P.J. Mays and their ability to go out on the field, and no matter what happened, they said, listen, we're going to put this running game out. You're not going to stop it. You might in the beginning slow us up a little bit, but the big machine is rolling straight ahead, and I look for good things this year from SIU again. How about that uh, October schedule? The second here against Northern Iowa, the next week at Youngstown. Well, I'll tell you what, that game against Northern Iowa last year, it was a little bit of trouble for them up there. That will be payback this year for SIU. Sweep, right side, Jackson. Got blockers in front, and he breaks it. Across the 40, tries to cut back up the middle, and says, hey, there's another three guys are getting all these carries and these yards, and everybody's putting them on TV. Give me the, give me the football. How about, how about this photo? Who's this guy right here? Natu would weigh 225 if he cut his hair. That is Mr. Natu Vicenia, but watch the big man get out something outside the crazy Hawaiian. He's just running and rolling. He gets a little bit of push. Now, he's just going to knock people around. Mr. Turner just kind of bounces off. Watch 69. He's going to go headhunt someone. He'll go find someone to knock him down. I heard rumors through sources that the Baldinger boys once had hair like that. You know what? Um, yeah, I did. And that's about the way my hair looks every morning. That's why I <laughs> decided to cut it off. And a timeout by SIU. They're not happy at all. Coach Kill's not happy. 2.43 to play. We'll take our final break. Come back. 42-3 SIU. Coach Kill's saying run the play. 43 to play in the ball game on a gorgeous night in Southern Illinois. 42 to three and SIU with Delaware losing should move to the number one spot in the land and one double A football. 
Give right side. Jackson will be brought down across the 45 up at the 47 yard line. He's trying to run the clock out here. Give some of these younger guys an opportunity to play. Get some game experience under the lines on TV. Hey, it's a good night. 55 yards, 55 rushes for 307 yards. Almost That's old done. Nebraska days right That's there. That's old Nebraska days. The offensive line now goes to Pizza Express, the buffet line. It's unlimited. Do we get to go? No, they won't allow us in. We just couldn't even hang. Well, I know you couldn't. I could. I would do a good job. I am challenging you to the pizza buffet at Pizza Express. First down pass there on a pass with just over two minutes to play in a 42-3 game. Go out of bounds at the 40-yard line. I don't know. I, I, th I think you get some of these big guys like Elmer McDaniel, 5'11", 315, the senior center, who's dominated up front for SIU. I think he could throw some thin slices back. I think he could put, set a new Olympic and world record in record time for throwing back some thin slices. Yeah, forget hot dog eating contests. You got to go with pizza. Give Jackson left side, breaks across the 35 down to the 34 yard line with a minute 50 to play in this ball game. And again, we can't stress it enough. It was a 14 3 ball game. A minute to go in the first half, and Simo is at the 25-yard line going into score. They could have made it a 14-10 game at the half, and it's been all SIU since. And I'm going to tell you what, they had SIU on the ropes in the beginning of the second quarter. SIU was having trouble. They stopped them a couple times, but they could not come away with points. And when you play a team with as many offensive weapons as SIU, if you don't get out ahead, it's going to be a long night as we see. Jackson gets outside, will be run out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Flags fly. But again, how about this? This is a junior from Rockwood summing up in St. Louis, and he's going, just give me a carry or two. Yeah, number four, but just the blocking at the point of attack and how everybody contributes. And, you know, they're all getting their chances to play tonight, and when they do, they take care of the jobs. And you don't like to see the holding penalties. But again, I can't impress on you enough the confidence level I see out of SIU, the swagger that they have on the field that they didn't have a couple years ago. Think about ago. it. You just named that they've got over 300 yards on the ground. There have been three carries of 20 plus oh, yards have been called 50, back for penalties. Yes. Or you'd be up near 400. It, it, it has been, as we, as we hear the penalty being called. I mean, tonight, what SIU has done on the field, this is what you see out of gateway football their ability to dominate up front, the strength of the offensive line. And that is one key. These guys are spending more time in the weight room than ever, and it's indicative on the field the way they can control the line of scrimmage. Minute 18 to play after the holding penalty brings it all the way back to the 44-yard line. Barnes gives left side. Got a new running back in there. I mean, how many running backs do they have? <laughs> He's off the Harley. He came off the Harley. I mean, <laughs> you, you got to be kidding me here. They just, they're going to put Boldinger in in a minute. No, that, no, that would be scary. That would definitely have to be a slow middle screen if they put me in this game. But I'm going to tell you what, folks, as we watch this play, SIU, I, we didn't get a really chance to talk about it, but watch the big man up front. They've been doing it all night. Their ability to open up holes. They are building a new weight room facility here on campus that 10 years ago would have rivaled some of the big schools. But you know what? Everybody has to have it because you have to be able to be strong to play in college football. That's Justin Duckett up from my neck of the woods, Germantown, Tennessee. Good program over there. He gets his second carry of the game. We'll try and bounce it outside. He'll be tripped up at the 39-yard line on what should be the final play of the football game. SIU in dominating fashion in the second half pulls away and blows out Southeast Missouri and says, hey, we are for real. A message has been sent across the Gateway and 1AA football. Gateway starts off another great year again with an excellent job of running the football, and Brandon Jacob is going to be the one, another bright spot for Gateway football this year. And you look at Jacobs and Whitlock, both go over the 100-yard mark and combine for 215 yards and five touchdowns, and they made, you've got Jackson, you've got a host of of others we'll take a break we'll come back we'll wrap things up when we come back on gateway football